Yo, what's poppin' everybody? How y'all doing out there today? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connell Cardenas. And before we get into it today, man, I just want to give a huge shout out to the title sponsor of Caffeine and Green, which is Seven Seas Roasting Company, coming straight out of San Diego, my home roaster. Now, what makes this roastery so sick is that we get to work with these farmers. We're not just getting these coffees, we're working with them directly and making sure that everybody's taken care of. So we're not taking care of just the consumer, we're taking care of that farmer as well. So it's really awesome. We get to showcase these coffees. Now, full transparency, I am the head roaster at Seven Seas. But regardless, you know that the coffee that I'm giving you is straight fire, yo. So if you head over to the website, sevenseasroasting.com, use my code, C and G at checkout, you're going to get three bags of coffee for 30 bucks. That's an, an amazing deal because two bags of coffee is essentially $32. So you're getting a bag for free. It's a no brainer. So you can go over to the website, choose from any of the coffees that we have, like our dark Guatemala, which is chocolatey and it's full bodied. and It's a little bit of our dark roast. And you know, it's just, we have other options. We have a Peruvian, we have our Lao coffee. It's the Fodom Kwan, our new Lao and uh Setapung as well. So we got options, people. So use that use that coffee code C and G at checkout, and you'll be good. My guest today, Bliss Lovell. This Mahomie, who's a trainer at Hardcore Fitness in Vista, California, and she's doing some pretty cool stuff. I really admire what she's doing. She has a great story, and that's pretty much why I wanted to have her on the show today. Um, the things that she's doing for other people, the program she's putting together the health journey that she's on and sharing her own story was very inspiring. And I really hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did. And bliss. This your time to shine, home girl. Let's go. Give me cap, cap, caffeine and green. It's your boy Connor. What's good? Good, good. Cap, cap, caffeine and green. Caffeine and green. And we are live. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bliss. Love all is in the house. Welcome to Caffeine and Green. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Fuck yeah. We're drinking. Uh, what are we drinking over here? We don't even like white wine and mm. we'd love this. So mm. whatever Leslie grabbed. Thank you, Leslie. I think it is a uh, hmm. It's a Napa Valley Savion Blanc 2016. I heard that's a good year. <laughs> Fabulous year. <laughs> <laughs> but what was a... Uh, what you were like? I want you to open up the podcast with. Uh, oh, spread I didn't. Your legs. I didn't I want know. to tell you to spread your legs. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to describe for everybody who's like wondering about that. It, I was trying to describe how like to get the mic closer to her, like her uh, mouth essentially. Is I was trying to describe like, okay, just put it on the corner, but her legs were like closed together, and I was like, well, you need to just like. And I was kind he of was doing like a, a gesturing. What my legs needed to do, <laughs> but he didn't want to say spread your legs. Yeah, I was like, sorry, my bad. I didn't want to say that. That was just like something it weird. It's hysterical. Um, but yes, and then the one thing also that you just brought up, and I didn't even think about this, is uh, your name, Bliss Lovell. Mm-hmm. What does that mean again? So my full name is Bliss Olivia Lovell, and so Bliss means like pure happiness, like the utmost happiness you can have. Olivia means peace. And then love all, it's just two words, love all. So like love everyone. So I have this like super ultra hippie, like peace, love, you know, happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Are your parents hippies? No, everyone no. asks me that. Yeah. So they're not. They're very like conservative, like Midwestern people. So they're actually born and raised in California, but they live in the Midwest now. But, okay. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're not from here. I'm actually originally from here. Originally from here. Yes. So my parents are both, they lived here their whole lives. Mm-hmm. And then I have uh, four siblings. We were all born here. And then we lived here. I moved, I think, when I was like eight. And we moved to Missouri because my dad wanted to start his own business. And we lived in L.A. also. And there was like, it was like, it's, I lived in what's called La Puente. It's super ghetto in L.A. <laughs> so we moved to Missouri because he went to like high school in Missouri for a couple of years. And was like, oh, that'll be a much better way to raise five children so damn yeah five children i would definitely say yeah for sure <laughs> how how or you can't even ask you can't ask ladies that actually never mind how many uh how many trips around the planet have you done <laughs> i am 27 and proud okay all right <laughs> fuck yeah fuck yeah so missouri yes and that's interesting my friend ryan he's from missouri mm. and he talks to me just like he kind of puts out this small town vibe but i can definitely tell he's enjoying san diego meaning yeah. like he's going now he's getting down i'm like <laughs> oh shit dude just last night 
I seen him like FaceTiming with a girl and then I see him like another girl that's been coming in the shop. He went and uh, was talking to her through the we had like this stand and like an open window. He's like talking to this girl. <laughs> then he leaves with like three other girls. I'm like, oh, my God, go, you go, Missouri boy. <laughs> What's up, dude? Oh What's it gosh. like in Missouri? Missouri's like much quieter and slower. Like I go there and like I'm so used to like California fast pace, which you don't feel like it's fast paced until you go to the Midwest and like literally the cashier just wants to like know how your day is going kind of deal. And it's very <laughs> cheap. Like I feel like everything like you feel like you're going at the dollar store. Every store you go in, it's just like, oh, this is three pennies for a gallon of milk. OK, like, perfect. It's just so cheap to live there. So but there's a reason. I mean. If you don't like cold weather and crazy seasons, then it's not for you. So, dude, I don't miss it. Yeah. I love going home to visit temporarily, but I'm bred a California girl like through and through. Okay. So, when did you move there? When you, how old were you when you moved over there? To Missouri? Yeah. I was like eight. Oh, so you actually had some time here. To, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And okay. then we came here like almost every summer. So, actually, to Oceanside mostly, which is funny because this is not where I'm from. But my aunt and cousins live in Oceanside. And oh, so perfect. I'd come here every summer. I had my senior portraits done here. And I was like, someday I'm going to live in Oceanside. And like the world just like works out. And like, here I am. Oh, yeah. You put it out there. Yeah. It's definitely going to, you know, lead you in that direction. That's tight. Yeah. So you live in an Oceanside now? Yes. Well, Damn. technically, I just moved to Carlsbad. So now I'm oh. a little bougie here. Whoa, you know? Whoa, hey, whoa. Hey. Moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, but, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So it's super sick. I love where I'm living now. It's like downtown Carlsbad. So I'm just like so nice. stoked about it. Yeah. Okay. It's really okay. Fun. Damn, is that over by like, that's not Tamarack over there, right? Oh, I live right next to Tamarack. Boom. Yep. Yep. That's a really right good surf Tamarack. spot. I know. It's beautiful. This gum is killing me right now with this, this wine. I it's not like, mixing well. Dude, I just kept thinking as you were talking. I was like, oh, my God. I just need to get this gum out of my mouth. <laughs> um, so, dude, yeah, at that Tamarack is actually where I learned how to surf. Oh, really? Yeah, the first time I ever stood up on a wave was in Tamarack. Oh, heck yeah. And I was like 17, I think. Really? I was like, hell yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Loved it out there. So, dude, eight years and then you moved to – I mean, that's enough time to honestly have some solid memories here. Mm -hmm. And then you go out there and are you just like – fuck this sucks <laughs> i mean i don't think so i was like i think young enough to kind of just i don't know like i don't remember hating it okay when i like moved there so i mean you're a kid so like snow is really cool and like i don't know like i have so many siblings to distract me obviously but yeah and we lived on like a cul-de-sac and there was like it was just every house was full of kids so okay so it definitely didn't even feel like it huh you no were, no it was when i got older and we would come to california especially when i was in like high school and i was like oh this is way more my vibe so oh, yeah. i started kind of like you know you figure out like what you enjoy what you don't mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cali was it yeah i have to say i mean i when i i've grown up here pretty much my whole life not san diego but northern california mm -hmm. and i've lived in all the ma major like metropolitan cities yeah and then I went to New Mexico, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> it's a different world. <laughs> Super different world. I mean, weather, people. Yeah. All, I mean, mad love to my homies in Albuquerque. Still love them out there, but damn. I was just like. Yeah, I mean, I even NorCal is like totally different. it's a different, different. planet. Yeah. It's a different planet up there. Yeah. It's a lot more. I'm like, this should be a different state. Like, you can't say you're from California when you live up here. You guys aren't California people. <laughs> Dude. They, but we are, though. It's it's uh, the hustler mentality yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. It's, it's definitely... I was talking about this earlier today with my friend Raleigh. He was... I was saying, you know, I feel like in Hawaii, they have, you know, not a lot going on. And, mm -hmm. like, depending on what island you're on. So, a lot of the people who are like, I'm going to get after it, they start their own businesses. And yeah. people like Farmer's Market Hawaii, my friend Marissa Faya... She has her own uh, bar in Kauai, and they have all these things. And I'm like, dude, that's that's like Bay Area all day. When you're at the yeah. Bay Area, you're like hustling all the time, totally working. And I've had people down here in San Diego when I first moved here. The way I worked, like, no, let's just go, let's keep going. Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? And people are like, bro, you're like aggressive. Yeah. Like, you need to calm San down. San Diego is like, hey, bro, it's like, put your feet up, go yeah, a little like, bit, slow no. down. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's also I've I've found my way here. So it's gotten to the point now where it's like, okay, I can, I, if I'm not going to be able to work on this thing, I'm going to go work on this other thing while I'm waiting for these things to happen yeah. over here. Yeah. But also pushing the envelope. That's like, a good quality to have. I kind of wish I was more like that. 
I don't think that you're not though. I mean, um, you're you're a trainer and you're up at three thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah. What is that? <laughs> I was talking about this before earlier. Is that my friend Mickey, uh, who does Just Go Lift Gym down in National City? Yeah. He gets up at three thirty in the morning too. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want to be bu like he doesn't want. He said he doesn't want people forcing their agenda. Like he's like, this is my time to like relax. Yeah. Like at three thirty in the morning, homie. I know. Like, See, damn. that's what I wish I was like. That I was like, oh, I just want to get up this early for me. I'm only getting up that early for other people because people are like, oh, bliss. On Monday, when you don't have to wake up early, come work out at 4 a.m. I'm like, eh, no. I'll <laughs> see you at 6. <laughs> Nasal. Nasal. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Dude, dude, that's crazy. 3.30 mm -hmm. in the morning. So what is – are you training people at like 4 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. So people – the gym opens at 4. First class is at 4.15. But like you have to get there at 3.30 to pretty much start like setting up. And like I like to have the gym set up that way as soon as people are walking in, I'm like – high five and getting them hyped like blasting music and not like busy setting up so Dude. you have to like set the vibe blasting music yes high fiving people Absolutely. keep in mind it's four o'clock in the yes. morning <laughs> and you don't even want them to know what time it is you want them to think like it is like out. midnight we're at the club like we're waking up we're ready to go <laughs> it's the club and it's like anti-club right dude no way there's, there's no alcohol there's no mocktails it's straight grinding out hitting the iron right dude. right exactly mm -mm. it's a good time but that is the hour of the most dedicated people i mean obviously it's 4 a.m what do you do you do you think you get more moms more dads more like ceo types yeah, yeah yeah absolutely like people who like don't have time for they're they're grinding and they're at work at 7 a.m like they're going and then they have stuff to do after work whatever it is like those are the busy people we get at that time so and they don't play around like there's a huge difference of like the class like the 9 a.m class like how yeah. they work out mm -hmm. and like the 4 a.m class it's just like not to hate on the people who work out at nine but they definitely are just you know they're just a little more chill than the 4 a.m. people. Yeah. It's just a different crowd. Maybe they've had a coffee or two. Exactly. They're, exactly. They're not pissed off that it's 4 a.m. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck am I here they've for? They've had nine <laughs> hours of sleep. You know, they're, they're oh feeling really God, good. Oh, my God, dude. That's cr So at 4, at 4 a.m., what are you bumping to get people hyped? Oh, I do like the hoodiest, rattiest of the music that oh, there yeah? is. Yeah. You I'm known some, for like. You got some rap? The trap. The yeah. Tra oh, trap. Oh, yeah. What's your definition of trap? I don't know. Just something that like the. The words are all bad and like you don't want your family to hear it, but like the beat's so good. <laughs> the words are bad and the music your family doesn't want to hear. You know, it's like not something you would like be proud to like be knowing the lyrics to, but oh, it, um, it's, you know, it's like Will Ferrell, like it gets the people going. It gets you know? the people going. It's provocative. Dude, so. I saw, do you, you obviously know who Drake is. Yeah. Uh, I saw, do you watch basketball at all? No. No. I'm not the, that cool. Okay. <laughs> There's a pro basketball player called DeMar DeRozan, and he used to actually play on the Toronto Raptors, who just won the finals. And Drake is from Canada. He's mm -hmm. a Toronto Fat Raptors fan. Yeah, like not, he like sponsors them, apparently. Dude, he's not a basketball player, and he fronts like he wants to be one so bad, regardless. <laughs> um, I'm not the biggest Drake fan, but there was he did a... Uh, like a, a skit with Will Ferrell and it was about like uh, handshake combos in the NBA. Dang, and, I wish I would have seen this. Dude, I'll tag you in it. I'll send it to you. Okay. But it's pretty funny because he, I, you got to give credit where credit's due. And honestly, they're like talking about handshakes and they're like, okay, this is the gossip, <laughs> the gossip girl. Yeah, we're going to do this. And then there's like the prom photo. And yeah. then DeMar DeRozan, this professional basketball player says like, he's like, what? Like, what the hell? And he's like, what? Did, what what's your name? DeMar? <laughs> Demar, he's like, the more I say it, the, the less I like it. I was like, I was like, damn it, that was actually pretty good. And he's like, yes. Will Ferrell's like, yes. Like, We're googling this you, as soon as the podcast is over. I can't even wait, dude. He's like, are you even a basketball player? Is that Will Ferrell, I'm like, damn it, fucking Drake. Ugh. I can't stand that dude. I I was telling all my homies who I'm like into basketball with. I'm like. I don't. I love the Raptors. Honestly, their team is really good. Mm -hmm. I've always kind of liked them because they were always like second best, always the bridesmaid, never the bride kind of thing. When <laughs> when LeBron was in the East, first right. year LeBron's out there, another team emerges. Go figure. It was the number two team that is now number one, <laughs> and they have a stacked team. And then Drake's over here, just like he has Golden State Warriors tats on his fucking body. No, he doesn't. Swear he has Steph Curry's number and he has Kevin Durant's number tatted on him, and he's like talking trash and all of a sudden people actually give a shit like what drake said to this basketball player it's like who cares what the hell he said but oh. I, t I was like 
He just wants to be involved. He just, yeah, he just, his heart. he's supposed to <laughs> want to be a baseball player, you know, like kind of thing. But okay. he, <laughs> fucking drink. I told my homies, like, I don't care if the Raptors win. I, that doesn't bother me. It's the fact that Drake thinks that he won yeah, the yeah. damn championship. That, that He'll be holding me. the trophy. Dude, he took a photo like Jordan, like holding the NBA finals no. ne- like to his head. Like he actually no. did work. Like, bro, <laughs> for it. get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yes. Dude, I cannot stand that, dude. Either way. <laughs> off, off topic. <laughs> he needed to vent, y'all. Dude, I did. I, I had to put it out there because <laughs> I just... I don't care if you disagree with me. I again, I have no hate towards the Raptors. It's Drake that I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in your lane, bro. <laughs> Stay in your fucking lane. Your huge lane. Yeah, yeah. Your you're, very you're successful. You're already massive billion lane. dollar lane. <laughs> I, I'm not hating on you. It's like you're a millionaire. Good for you. Stay in your lane. Go over there. You're not Jay Z. You don't own the team. <laughs> Dude. Oh man, that's great. That was a good story. So you're a trainer. At, I don't think we established this actually. Oh, Maybe yeah. for people Sorry. who are listening, they might hear it. But you're a fitness trainer. Yes. That's why I wanted to have you on. Mm-hmm. Fitness is an underlying theme of this. I love fitness. Uh, I like running. I like just trying to get after it a little bit. But Leslie, my wife, like just praises you all the time. Well, bliss this, <laughs> bliss that. I'm like, okay, cool. This is perfect. <laughs> I need uh, I need some more positive female people on the, on the podcast to talk about your hustle talk about what you're doing and that's why you're here today is because yeah. you're fitness you're doing your thing you have like little programs you do like mm-hmm. fortitude yeah um six week challenges leslie again raves about you constantly yeah leslie's my girl dude yeah she you know it's funny you're the only person she's ever gone out for past like 10 o'clock when you're oh, like wow, I th- that's love yeah, yeah. we went and hung out that one night and it was so lame we were so disappointed <laughs> Like, none of us ever go out. We are all early birds. And all one night, like, there was, like, four of us girls were like, we're going to have a girls' night. We're going to go out. It was lame. And we were all, like, so disappointed because, like, we wasted, like, our precious sleep for this, like, night. But <laughs> we had a good time, but the bar was a disappointment. Dude, it's it at fun. First Street, right? Yeah. First Dude, Street was that's so my spot, late. though. I know. I love First Street. And, and it was, like, on a weekend or Friday, right? And they yeah. always have the DJs turning up a little bit in there. Yeah, no, he was like sleeping behind there. I don't know what he was, he was doing. Over I it. was like, bro, do you need? I got a playlist for you. Like, hook up my phone. Dude, like, dude. <laughs> I will get these people moving. Do you want to hear a, a fucking lame ass story? But it's super awesome. We went to. Please tell me you did this before. Uh oh, no, kind of, kind of along the playlist vibe. All right. All it right. was me and Leslie decided to throw a, a, a dual party, uh, uh, for our thirtieth birthdays, mm. and we had it at the VA, over in Encinitas because it was like up. fifty bucks. Or like a hundred bucks for the big room. It was fifty bucks for like the back room, oh my or a hundred bucks for the to rent it out for yeah. like three or four hours. I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, and we just told all of our homies we had a f- like fat crew, but we got there and we were, there was like a band playing, and they were like, I went up and I was like, oh, eh. it was like part of the package. No. Oh. They told they double booked. Oh. Yeah, and so. We go up and we're like, hey, and they're like, well, the back room's open. And I was like, well, we didn't pay for the back room. And I'm thinking, yeah, we got the big room. Let's just get the big room. They're like, okay, we can have it there. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, like almost an hour later, we finally go up. The band finishes and they were like kind of salty. They were like, hey, we'll play for you for free, bro. Like the people want to still hear it. Yeah, they just wanted to play. And I was like, dude, all my homies are here. I'm sorry. But I have this playlist. And when I said the playlist, dude, they were not having that. <laughs> they were like, we're a real band. And I was like, that's cool. Were but they all like retired? Dude, yeah, they were older. Aww. But like, they were not like super old, but they were like 50, 60 years. Not, not 60. Holy no, mackerel, they were like 45 to 50. Though, no, 45 <laughs> to 50. There we go. 45 to 50. There we go. They weren't that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was exaggerating. But oh, my God. Well, these poor old people. You no, can't do that. No. <laughs> it was not that bad. But I, I, when I said the playlist, they were like, dude, what the fuck? Really? We're like, we can play you whatever you want. I'm like, trust me. You cannot play me whatever I want. Because play, I'm, turn down for what? Dude, or like some 3-6 Mafia. <laughs> like ever since I've been popping my collar, you know? <laughs> and I wasn't trying to be a dick. It was just like, I told the dude and I said, I remember this so vividly. I was like, dude, I've been working on this playlist for a week. <laughs> Every that. trainer has have had that life. I've been working on this place for a week. Dude, and you're telling me no? Like, bro. I, you're so proud of it. Dude, yes. And I even came like a couple days before to 
to adjust the audio so we could plug it in. So I was like, no, bro, this is, yeah. this is happening. Oh yeah. So we end up integrating and it's like super awkward. Cause it's like a bunch of the, the people who are at the VA bar and then all of our people, but I'm like, dude, hanging out at your yeah. Party. Yeah. And so they were like, well, they're not going to leave. I was like, they don't have to leave. This is their bar. It's just like, we rented it. I want to play the, my music and we'll, we'll pay for all our drinks. It's like, it's all good. Oh and so it was like super awkward at first. And then I go to plug it in and it was like three, six mafia, that song. <laughs> <laughs> the Papa Macala, yes. and then uh, after that, the next song came on, and nobody's like, it was just super awkward. And then the next song was like a G Easy song, and me, Leslie, and her best friend Nicole go out on the stage, and we just start like belting the lyrics, and we're like, Woo! it's just me, myself, and I, and we're just like <laughs> drinking. And by this point, like all, everybody's like looking at us, and they're just like, bro, like not feeling it. The band mem- members come over to me. And they're like, hey, bro, is this your party? Like one of the different band members I hadn't talked to. I was like, yeah. And he was like, is that your like I was double fisting because the beers were super cheap. And I was just like, I don't want to go back and get another one. I want to get one. So I fucking started. I'm like, he's like, yeah, these your beers. And I was like, yeah, he like grabs a beer out of my hand and he drinks it. It takes a sip and then hands it back to me. I was like, no, it's cool, dude. It's yours now. He's like, I don't want it. I was like, "Okay, I don't want it either. And like I put it down and I just walked away. And Leslie was like did you seriously just walk away from that? And I was like, what am I going to say to that dude? I'm like, I'm not a veteran. He's in here. He wants to do that. That's his prerogative. It cost me two bucks. Like, <laughs> I'm, what am I going to say? And then as soon as everybody started getting drunk and then it was like, Oh, you guys are pretty chill. And I was like, oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> and then we dude. but after everybody started getting drunk, then we all like intermingled. And then it was just like partying with everybody. And they're like, <laughs> one dude was like, Oh man, my bad. I was like, dude, I don't care. I just, I wanted to play my music. It wasn't right. anything against you guys, honestly. And right. they, they ended up being cool at the end of the night and everybody was just fuck hammered. Oh my God. But gosh. It, it ended up being like a way sicker party and the party, like the, bo- the bar was popping. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, but that playlist. That is epic. It's like, man, I got a playlist, bro. The playlist is everything. Dude, it really is. When you're, when you're training, what is going on through your head? You're like, do you have like a shuffle mode or are you thinking, are you doing beats per minute? Like I want to keep these guys at like 120, 130 beats per minute. So you, cause on Spotify you can yeah. set playlists according to the beats per minute. I'm so sick about Spotify. So, um, so I actually fill out the room because at like different hours, there's like certain like vibes that are just like, they're not having it. Like again, the 9am vibe is not having the trap music. They want like, EDM they want like hit songs and like top 40 yeah yeah they want, they're those people like as soon as I play like I don't know something like that says like pussy or like little baby <laughs> little baby like, or some they're Gucci all just Mane. like they're not having it so I okay. have to like you just fill out the room but like you definitely like learn the crowd and like but there's definitely like songs I will like put in order because I'm like oh this song will be so lit after this song <laughs> But, like, we talk about that. We even talk about that in our, like, trainer meetings. They're like, hey, like, remember, you guys are technically DJs as well. Like, you got to fill out the vibe of the room. And I'm like, because some trainers take that very seriously. I am one of them. Because if there's a trainer who's playing, like, crap music, I just, it just changes the whole vibe of the workout. And that's, okay. like, super important to me. Whereas, like, the workout, yes, that's important. But the vibe is what people remember. They don't remember, like, oh, those, like, that super set Bliss had me do was so like insane they're like no like the vibe like they're just like pumped about like the room like how like they feel and like how the energy and all that stuff so like that's so important for like boot camp style like classes or whatever now do you do you focus more on reps or do you focus more on like obviously like technique doing it right showing people how to do it mm-hmm. kind of you know with core and stuff like that because honestly I, I totally agree with what you say, but I just coming from what I hear when Leslie, because Leslie will go to like the 530 classes or yeah. whatever, and she'll come back. She's like, man, almost to completely opposite what you said. She comes back and she remembers what she did. She's like, man, I fucking oh, I got after it today and like mm-hmm. I did this or like I got a new PR or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, that's cool. Yeah. I, the first thing she tells me about is what she did today at, right. the, at the gym. So she actually... Maybe might be that focus on the workout. Yeah, she focuses yeah. more on the workout. So there's and- totally this that so that's why like it's so good to have like your programming matters because like people will like because they like know like they'll be like oh like 
Bliss's workouts are really like um, they're just known for being harder because I put stuff back to back that just sucks. I'll think about <laughs> what would really suck to do after chest press. Oh, I know push ups, and then I'll have to push up. What would really suck to do after that? I know burpees, and so it's just like a flow. And so <laughs> just making it suck even more. Yeah, after. Like, <laughs> it's funny. I'll literally lay in bed and be like, "What would suck to do after that?" Oh, I know, and then I'll just like stack it up. So programming is super important because that's what like you're like known for. But like the vibe of the room, like people like love to have like a certain vibe, whether it's like hyped up or um, some trainers are just really funny and they're like witty or they'll like say stuff like so everyone that's why everyone has their favorite trainers. It's not even necessarily about like the workout unless they just love to be slayed or love an easy workout, then they'll have like their favorite trainer. But they always like kind of like generate towards like the vibe or whatever interesting yeah, yeah. The, the the uh the favorite trainer thing leslie has definitely told me about that too <laughs> yeah i've never really i'll definitely work out and do classes and do those things but i don't know i think I, there's those people when you go to the gym and they're like they want to make friends and they're oh, yeah. like you know they're totally. like trying to talk to you and when i go i'm like I just like focus. I'm like, don't even fucking talk to me. And I'm not even trying to be like that. I yeah. just get in my own head and I just don't give a fuck about who's around me. And I'm just like, no, I need to do this. And I think that's just from like skateboarding, being involved in running and any type of like individual thing yeah, going on. Exactly. But I like going to those things, but it's definitely, I always trip out when I see like people are like super pumped and they're just like, yeah, like, I don't even know. Give me, give me some. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm that person. <laughs> Going up, slapping someone's butt who I don't know. And I'm like, hell yeah, man. I love that set. <laughs> Pulling some fucking baseball moves out. Yeah, 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 good job. Good job. Yeah, okay, give okay. It, give it some ass slap. <laughs> Dude. I love it. So oh, I'm I'm 100% through and through a group fitness person. Okay. So, because I'm all about like the hype and energy and like going around and like getting everyone else hyped mm-hmm. and like, yeah, yelling at the dude who's like 10 feet away. Like, hey, Oh, that's all you're gonna live today? And the guy's like, Oh shoot, and then he'll go throw up. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, just like it. so fun. It's so fun. Do you take pride in making people throw up? Not in making people throw up. Did you say throw up, right? That's did I just hear that? You said throw oh. up more weight. Oh, throw I was Come like now, I, I was like, damn, you're gonna make people throw no, no, up. No, like, like that's kinda tight though. Like, oh, okay. That's what you're gonna throw up. <laughs> Duh. Get them Sorry. 30s. I I fuck it. <laughs> What is that, a 10? <laughs> like, have you ever seen that that, uh, that scene in Friends? Like uh, when Joey gets a hernia, it's like, damn, yes, you're 15. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me like you so much more, dude. dude. Yes. Leslie. Quote the Friends. No, oh, dude. I've seen that show through and through pro- like four times. Oh, absolutely. Like from start to finish, like absolutely. first episode to the last episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been, I've been with Leslie for a long time, almost 10 years. Wow. I've seen it that many times. Like, dude, I have the fucking... <laughs> yes the friends that's down. how i have friends in the office i just go back and forth dude that's me that's yeah. me too Pff, fuck it. give me some we just yes. high five guys dude, that's right we just became best friends <laughs> um office i that specifically i did not i i had this thing i'm like no i'm not gonna watch the office <laughs> i'm not gonna watch it i don't i don't think it's funny i don't i don't understand what the hype is yeah and then i ran out of shit to watch and i legitly went on and i said all right, I'm going to start The Office. And then all of a sudden, the first season I thought kind of sucked. Mm-hmm. And my one homie who's like a diehard Office fan, she's like, just wait till the second season. It really gets better. And sure enough, I was hooked. You're hooked forever. Dude, I fucking cried on the last episode. Right? Dude, Absolutely. Dude, when they're we at the did. wedding and shit. I was just like, all- Leslie's like, said, are you fucking serious? Said. We yeah. all cried. <laughs> Leslie's like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, dude, tears. I'm like, I don't know why the fuck I'm crying right now. <laughs> I cried when Michael left and she dude. hugged him at the airport. Like, I just killed me. I was sitting here with Leslie and we're oh, like, do you want to watch the last episode? She's like, I'm ready. And we watched, we I'm both ready. screamed when we saw Michael come for the fucking best man. Yes. Pre- I was like, oh my God, Michael. We're like, ah. You came. Dude. That's what she's. <laughs> the best. The best. <laughs> so I, I, I'm sorry for all you people out there who think less of me now, but I, no shame. I was seriously was like, heart- I cried when Michael left too. Yeah. I was like, God it's damn tough. it. Dude, so you're tough. binging it and you're getting all into it. Yeah. Jim and Pam. Yo, oh, when they, greatest like, love story of all time ever ever <laughs> dude this is way too okay we got to get back on topic we're I fucking know, talking I'm sorry. about god I'm really sorry oh my goodness do your parents ma- mind if i swear because I'd, i'm hoping you're gonna no. they're gonna listen to this <laughs> <laughs> no oh my god all good all right cool but um one thing i want to this hopefully this doesn't kill the vibe but one thing that is just off the top of my head and i really wanted to talk to you about was um 
an Instagram post that you posted the yeah, other day. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I legitly came home and I said to Leslie, I said, babe, did you see Blitz's post today on Instagram? And she said, yeah. And I, 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 she's all the Barbie one. And I was all, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one. And I was sitting there cause knowing that you were going to be coming on the show. I saw this post and you have this split screen of transformation from I don't know what year it was to 2019. Yeah. And you, dude, you don't even look like the same person. Yeah. And the left side, if you don't mind me saying this, of course, the left side, you were like this stick thin mm-hmm. person with like these like little tiny shorts on. I was like, who is that person? Mm-hmm. And I read, you know, your post about it and you were cardio all the time, afraid of food. And now you just eat whatever and you work out all the time. Yep. How, you know, in today's day and age, for me, I feel like I'm at the the middle point. I'm in that that generation where I know enough about social media, but I'm I'm not like super advanced as like younger kids, but I'm not like super uh, behind the curve either. Right. At like to put things out there like that, it's it takes a lot of courage mm-hmm. that I've, I've started to realize, especially with younger people who have a problem with body images or, or like how they look at themselves and stuff like that. So did it take a lot for you to put that picture side by side and like put it out there and really have to like see what people were going to say or did it even matter? Yeah. I mean, this definitely isn't the first time I've shared the transformation. So now it's actually something that like I really enjoy to share. Um, but when I first brought up, um, and first actually told anyone on social media that I had had, you know, a binge eating disorder and this fear food, I mean, it took a long time to post about it because it's, It's just really embarrassing, and it was more embarrassing because I thought about the people who knew me then, and I was like, gosh, like, they're going to, like, understand, like, why I, like, had all this weight gain, and they're going to, like, think back how they knew me then, and, like, that I was doing all these things behind closed door, like, binge eating and starving myself, and just this whole, like, run around. Binge eating meaning, like, you would just eat a shitload of food at once? Yeah, so my binges are pretty gnarly, Um, but yeah, I would basically come home probably only having had about... I would get home from work around like 4.30. In the morning or in the afternoon? In the afternoon. Okay. And um, I had an office job at this time. This was before I was a trainer. And um, I had probably only had around four to 500 calories for the day. And um, I would be getting ready to go to the gym. And then I would just inhale. I mean, I added it up on my fitness pal um, not that long ago because I was actually just extremely curious about where my calories were. I mean, it was anywhere from like 12 to like 1,800 calories that I would eat with in like five minutes. I would just shovel all this food in. I mean, I'm talking like four Quest bars, two bowls of Golden Crunch cereal. Yeah. Can you imagine the fiber that was running? Four, yeah. Four Quest bars? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yes. Dude, whoa. Yes. Okay. I would eat four Quest bars. I would eat two bowls. My, my binges were always pretty much the same thing. It was four Quest bars, two bowls of Golden Crunch, and then just like however many spoonfuls of peanut butter I would shovel in. That was pretty consistently what it was. Um, so I would eat all of that food, and then I would, like, go to the gym, <laughs> get my lift on, and then, um, yeah, just come home and then go back to my, like, either protein shake and green beans or fish and asparagus or whatever it was. So, And, like, nobody knew. It was just this, like, secret that I kept for, like, the longest time. And it was, like – So you but, – but you wouldn't throw it up. No, so actually I tried to be bulimic and I couldn't like get myself to throw up and I kept trying and kept trying and I just basically couldn't figure it out wherever it was. I would just like <coughs> sit over the toilet and just like shove my hand back in there and though I would like gag, I just wouldn't throw up and so I ended up gaining over 60 pounds from this binge cycle. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, so, yeah. Whoa, wait. You you got like super skinny to mm-hmm. S- overweight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like back down? Yes. Whoa. Yeah. So that's like the first transformation of like when I got to like my lowest, which was 98 pounds. And then I got all the way up to 100, I think it was like 167 pounds. It was like the high 160s. Because I remember saying to myself, I am not going to weigh 170. Like there's just no way. Um, But yeah, like my, my pants ripped. I couldn't go to work because I couldn't have any pants that fit. And these one pair of pants that fit ripped. It was, like, humiliating. I was just, like, crying all the time because oh. I went from being, like, this super skinny, like, fitness freak to, like, this girl who was, like, you know, obviously overweight and just in, like, I was just very, it was just a very sad time for me, so. 
Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that part. I I would have never guessed that. Yeah. It's actually still really hard for me to share Whoa. Well, the thank like, you for heavier sharing. photos. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's still something that like when I go. And unfortunately, I really wish I had the ones where I was like in in like my room with like a bikini on. Um, this is before iCloud. And so I lost all of those photos at my heaviest when I was like, was like, you know, in like a little bit of clothing to where you could actually see my body fat. But, like, I still have some, but it's just harder to see, like, where my weight gain really was because a lot of the photos I deleted off of Facebook because I was embarrassed that I looked big or whatever. But even the ones I still have, like, when I go to post it, it's just always kind of like, okay, here we go. And, like, you know, and then I go post it. But Why do you think, why do you think that is, that you feel more uncomfortable showing a bigger photo than, like, a super skinny photo? Because I think for me it's just – that skinny photo, there's more like it's more of an internal sickness, whereas like the bigger photo, I feel like people can like see the like the sickness I had because I obviously have all of the body fat or whatever. But it's like when I was at my skinniest in that first photo that you saw, mm -hmm. I actually got the most amount of attention for like, hey, what are you doing? Like, what's working for you? Like, oh, bliss, what? give me really? fitness advice. Yeah, yeah. And, um, oh. so it was very, I was in denial that I was that skinny. And I actually remember when like my family and like people would like say things, I was like, oh, they're just not about the fitness life. They're just jealous that I look this way. And, um, but yeah, when I realized that I probably had an issue when there was this girl at the gym and like, this is like such a psycho story, but there was this girl who I was just always wanted to look like, I'm like, gosh, if I just could figure out how much she weighed then I would know and at this point um, I think this is when I was like either 100 pounds or 98 pounds um, at my lowest and the girl there was like this digital scale in the gym mm -hmm. where like you would go weigh yourself and so I saw that she was walking to it so I jumped off the Stairmaster and ran up behind her because I was like I have to know how much she weighs and she was like 127 and I remember like feeling like so sad and I was like gosh like the girl weighs way more than I do and almost 30 pounds yeah exactly and um double zeros at the time no longer fit and I don't know if like if anyone on here listening like girls know how small a double zero is dude I know how, do how small a double zero yeah. is. it didn't fit you meaning it was too baggy it was too big whoa yeah and so I had to go buy like leggings and like really <clears throat> tight fitting things um and I was still just like in denial I was like gosh I've got only my love handles would go away you know if only this fat on my you know what I mean so I used to think that girls said those things for attention but now I really understand like the like mental issue you have of like looking at yourself and like not seeing what is actually there because I was totally there and it's just crazy like the delusion that you have with like your own your body and stuff like that so dude that's Oh man, that's like really, it's honestly kind of a little hard to hear. Mm -hmm. That's, I I knew a girl in high school. She was like one of my homies. And the only reason I knew that, I was like, dude, I told her, I was like, dude, you're so skinny. And mm -hmm. she's like, I wear a double zero. And I was like, I don't know what that means. But and she's like, no, this is the size of the pants. And I remember I had like an, like a girlfriend from high school and mm -hmm. she worked at like a Hollister. And I remember going in there one time to go to see her. And I was like, Oh, I'm just going to look at the size real quick. And it said double zero. And I was like, dude, these things were. They look like children's pants. Yeah, they're super tiny. Yeah. And those didn't fit you. No. Wow. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's a little hard to hear. I mean, myself, I was like a really, really fat kid. Mm. Really fat, like double chin, like a, like a triple chin. Yeah. Like I would have like a double chin is like when you just, you know, whatever you like make it, whatever. I mean, everyone has a double chin when yeah, you right? flip that camera around, right? Right. But. I had like a triple chin and my cousin, Cassie, if you're listening, she at every chance, even to this day, and like we're, th she's a year older than me. She's 34. will still post pictures of me or just send me texts. Like I look at this little fat kid and she just like still hates on me. I'm like, what the, what the hell? <laughs> like, and it's still like, fuck, you know, it's forever. She'll have, she like, she so always, when you were like little, like a kid, dude, I was fat. I was big until 13. Wow. Yeah, for a good portion. For See, I'm really glad I was never overweight as a child. I can't imagine. Oh, dude, it was rough. Yeah. Dude, I, the Childhood one, is hard enough. Dude, the one, the time where it really, really affected me, I was in 
fifth grade and my mom, we were like pretty broke and we, <clears throat> my mom would go to Payless and buy me my shoes. And that's, I just realized, all right, all right Payless is where I'm going to get new shoes, but new shoes regardless. It yeah. doesn't matter. And I was I, all about the Payless life. I got you. Right? Everybody was, I feel like, but yeah. not a lot of people, like Nikes and stuff. But mine was like, all right, cool. I need some basketball shoes because <clears throat> the school I went to at that time in Newark, California, uh, it, they had basketball courts. I was like, dude, I'm trying to play. All the kids are playing. Hell yeah. And I got these shoes. And they said 2001. It was like and, like and one, but it was like 2001. <laughs> and dude, we were playing basketball one day. And this kid said to me, he's like, oh, is that how much you weigh? And I was Aww. like, so dude, I made my mom take me back to pay less the next day. And or at least like a week or two later. And she said, I said, I can't wear these anymore. And I told her what happened. And I was like, it legitly destroyed me. And my mom was one of those people. She was like, no, it works. It's fine. But oh, on that one, really when I told sad. her that, my heart. dude, but no, it's way better though, because this, I feel like it was one of those moments in life that it directed me to go the other direction mm. where because of that, that whole interaction, yeah. Uh, my mom took me back to pay less and I got this first pair of this it was essentially like a skate shoe yeah before so she let you return shoes. the shoes uh yeah okay. and we oh that's what it was we did return them and then i got skate shoes and they were called the east sides or the east siders or something like that and i remember thinking like dude hell yeah and i got my first skateboard around that time wow. so then it kind of went into that and then got my first pair of vans after that and then it just skateboarding the whole rest of the time so yeah. i was like oh maybe it was like one of those defining moments yeah. it was like you know go that that's way cool. so Totally. Yeah, but it was that was a, a big deal for me. And then it basically kind of climaxed at seventh grade. Mm -hmm. I seen this dude who played baseball with me, and he was like the most popular kid in eighth grade because we did like K through six, seventh through eighth, and yeah. then high school, Same. right? Yeah. The eighth grade graduation was like the eighth graders. Oh, shit. Yeah, right. Right? I seen Berto Salazar uh, go across the fucking the stage and got a standing ovation from all the homies, and I was all... I didn't see him as being like the most fresh dress. Oh, of course, I, he always had the coolest clothes like FUBU and shit when it was. <laughs> dude, I was all about the FUBU, like on the real. Super hard, the big wow. FB. Yeah. Throwback. Dude, FUBU Holy and lugs. Crap. Yes. Yeah, dude, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, dude, like rugby tees and lugs and like mm -hmm. black jeans to match like the rugby tee or something. Yo, it was, that was back in the day. Killing me right now. But he got like a standing ovation and I saw him and I said, damn, I need to be like that. Mm. So I, my mom was a trainer. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how my whole like fitness thing has always been accomplished after that point. My mom was a trainer the whole time I was growing up and she had this little fat kid. Like, what? <laughs> where were you at, ma? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, like. I was Did you like, think you were just like cute and fat and you'd grow out of yeah, it? Yeah. She was always like, you're so cute. Though. I'm like, mom, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> you know? But I was, I always tell Leslie this too, but my mom was always at work. So I'd be like at school and I'd come home and I would get like white bread and put cheese. And then she got me like the pepperonis and I would just like Stop. every day and just warm it up. Yes. I wouldn't even toast Epic it. Epic white trash meal right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. And just eat pizza every day. Yes. <laughs> I was all about the hot pocket life, dude. So oh, we're yeah. pretty same. I'm a little pop tarts, here. pop tarts, pop tarts. Okay, Yo. you know what I started doing in high school? I would put butter on my pop tarts. Is that not? <laughs> Wait, after after you toasted them, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Dude, my homie Ian used to, he buttered his toast and then put it in the toaster, and he's like, "Dude, Savage. my parents are pissed. I fucking <laughs> the, the toaster caught on fire. <laughs> so you butter the toast before you put it in. What the fuck?" But yeah, you buttered them. Yeah, like it's just a total fatty. Like, dude. Yeah, that was what I ate every single morning because I'm I couldn't have cereal like my siblings because I was lactose intolerant. So oh, like re legit locked lactose. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. So, so you get the brown sugar one because the other one has dairy in it, the like the strawberries and the raspberries see, and blueberries. I would eat that one. So apparently, it, like, didn't mess. It. And that's the Maybe thing. It was I just sugar, actually. Maybe it's probably just like <laughs> eighty grams of sugar. Yeah. But yeah, every morning that or a honey bun. So. Yeah, my What's nutrition. a honey bun? Are you serious? A honey bun's like... Oh, is it like a cinnamon roll? Yeah, kind of, but like, but more white trashy, but yeah. White trash. You like keep it in the package, you put it in the microwave for like 20 seconds, and it like just, it just melts in your mouth. 
What? It's I no. It, okay, it's I don't like a ding dong. It comes in a box. A ding dong? You put a ding dong <laughs> in the fr- in the microwave? <laughs> what are you talking about? I just mean like it's in like the like the white trash pastry section. You I, know what I mean, I don't know. You no, should, I don't. To, you need to venture off down that aisle. But dude, I was always in the Mexican like little stores mm. with my dad, or we'd go to like the the fruit stores, like the fruit uh, yeah. stands. Yeah. And then there would just be like the Mexican cokes. And uh, the, we'd pull off and get vegetables and shit from there. So I'm like, dude, yeah, this is this is where I went. And the, so I was like, there'd always be like Spanish and Mexican people because yes. my dad would just be like, yeah, we're doing this, or he'd be make me listen to fucking mariachi music or something. <laughs> like, this is your culture. I'm like, I don't know what that means, man. <laughs> but, but I just, yeah, I don't know. I was, I didn't know my mom's side of the family, so oh. I, I only grew up with my Mexican side of the family, oh, which is, oh, that's interesting. I love it. Don't get me wrong, but there's definitely like interesting things that when you talk to, you know, it's just different cultures, right? You're growing up different ways. So there's things that I didn't do that way. Yeah. But also at the same time, when I did meet my family on my mom's side, uh, they were white white? trash. Yeah. Oh. Irish. Oh. I was told my whole life I was German, Irish, and Mexican. (laughs) I take the 23 of me, (laughs) zero percent zero German. (laughs) I'm more Mexican than I am Irish, but I'm legit split half and half. Wow. Yeah. That's so, so like, what a gnarly combo. Dude, I know. I'm like, no wonder whiskey and tequila are like my drinks. Like, <laughs> fuck. And it's like the two craziest ones. I told Leslie, I said, we're fucked, dude. I already know. Whatever kid we're going to have is just going to be a demon. <laughs> if she, Filipino, full blood Filipino, Irish, and Mexican. <laughs> Get out of here. There's going to be so much sass and like attitude. You guys should be able to reproduce. Dude, I f- <laughs> <laughs> we're getting older. Just saying, I'm just like, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I don't know how we got on that topic. I don't either. Really, yeah. I really don't. The, oh, yeah. Just growing up like the white trashy version. Oh, that's oh right, what that's we are, right. our, our snacks. Pop tarts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Pop tarts led to reproducing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no. So when I was, when I was like a, having that life changing moment and got skinny, I remember I got so skinny to the point where I was like, I would even ask my mom, like weirdly, I was like, can I eat a pickle? Like I chop up a pickle. I was <laughs> yeah, like, can you I get eat crazy. this? I get crazy about it because I'm yeah. like, dude, I need to get skinny, and I was just running all the time and. How working old were you out. at this point? It was in eighth grade. You're in eighth. Going grade. into eighth grade, so I was probably like twelve, going on thirteen. Wow. And I was just so. I don't know. I just like got hell bent. I like focused on everything on losing all that weight. And I remember coming back my eighth grade year and like all the girls were all like, Oh my, is that Connor? And I was like, it worked <laughs> yes. from that point on, dude. But then it got weird. It was like, I, I ended up becoming more like my dad in the sense where my dad was super skinny his whole life. Oh. So then it was like, I, I think I just grew a little bit and then it worked yeah. out, but then it was like skating all the time. You don't go gain any weight right. at all. So yeah. But now the fitness uh, journey has taken me in this direction where uh, I was just talking about this today, uh, talking to my friend Raleigh. I was like, how do you do so many businesses and keep that stress off? I asked my other homie that earlier this week too. I'm like, how do you keep the stress off? And he goes surfing from earlier in the week. Raleigh, he works out every day. He's like, if I don't work out, I'm grouch or I go and mm. work out by myself. But he's like, I have to work out every day. I have been kind of having these issues where I'm doing so much, but I won't work out. And then I just like mm. physically start to feel like the best way I can describe it is I feel like I'm caving in on side of myself almost. Yeah. And then I'll go to the gym and something starts hurting and I don't think I can do it. And then I just get motivated. I'm like, fuck that. And you just put all this into it and you keep going and you do it. And then you're just like dead. And I left the gym and I told Leslie, I said, I honestly feel a lot better now. Yeah. Just getting that. That endorphin rush. Well, I mean, I don't even know if you want to call it endorphin rush. It's just. I go. I I start thinking just random weird shit like like I start talk I start sh- talk, like talking shit to myself Ooh. like you're a bitch like you, know, like you ain't gonna do this what Mm-mm. like just like motivating like you ain't shit like what ah uh, just like another one I dude I start talking mad shit to myself yeah. like Conor McGregor yeah in my head saying the most mean shit to myself that I could ever think of and or like. I say weird ass shit like Leslie's gonna leave you if you don't do this. 
try, uh, you know, some weird ass shit like that. <laughs> like, Leslie's listening like, what? Dude, honestly, I, cause I, I've realized my body is so, as I've gotten older, I'm like really in tune. I feel like with my body yeah. and it, dude, I start to take it on. But then just yesterday I was talking to one of my coworkers, this, uh, my homie Leov. And she said to me, uh, last night while we were like working or whatever, she was all, I can tell when you're getting stressed. I was like, what do you mean? Cause I was like, I'm trying to think how I get stressed. And I don't, the doctors told me I'm getting stressed. I don't understand this. <laughs> and she's like, you get this look in your eye where you start like just staring off. <laughs> And then she's like, I'll start talking to you and I won't even like hear what she's saying. And then she'll be like, Connor, and I'll look at her and be like, oh, yeah, what's up? And she, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I don't even realize it. But then I go to the gym and after I leave, I'm just like, yeah. But also at the same time, I'll also get down on myself a little bit sometimes when I don't work out. Like, what are you doing? Like, you couldn't just at one hour, but yeah. it's like, dude, that one hour it takes, like, I could have been doing this or I could have been doing right. that or... I need to work on this coffee stuff or I need to work on the podcast or something like I need to hang out with Leslie. I need to like make sure I'm giving my wife everything I can, you know, yeah. of, of myself to, to make our, our, uh, marriage better, you know, cause yeah. that, that's a full-time job too. Totally. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm starting to realize even more so it's like, you just have to make it part of your daily routine. Yeah. I mean, you're a trainer. Is that what made you want to be that trainer to uh, going from these extremes? Yeah. What motivates you to do that? Um, I don't want anyone to feel how I felt. And I have a lot of empathy for, especially like women, because I know what it's like to like, one, feel intimidated by the gym and think that it's scary because I had no idea how to use anything except for a treadmill. Okay. Um, so that has a huge piece of my heart. And then um, my biggest passion is really just educating people on food and getting them to balance. Because I, I just remember like, I mean – countless nights of just crying about how I just felt so hopeless and felt so like envious of people who weren't struggling like I was and like how do people how do they just like live a normal life like I felt like all my girlfriends were just like you know they would work out but they would drink and they would eat whatever they wanted and they just weren't struggling with what I was dealing with and I was like so obsessed with food and so obsessed with weight loss and like not winning right and so for me, it's like, okay, I know that so many other women are struggling with this and, like, feeling, like, hopeless. And so that's, for me, it's just, like, I don't want anyone to feel how I felt. And I, like, go into a gym and I can just immediately, like, feel that and see it in other people. And so it just, I'm so grateful that I had that. And um, I remember I used to always, like, wish that I was, like, all my friends who never struggled with um, their weight. I was like, gosh, why was I never given that body or that metabolism? And now I know it's truly so that I could be the trainer that I am because I have so much compassion and I have so much understanding and like I relate. And so I just, I just get it and they can feel that. And especially like when I speak about it. And so it's like, if I had never struggled and that's when people connect with me the most. Um, I've actually noticed that like a lot of females initially don't like me when they first meet me. A lot of females? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's like something I struggle with and it's because they look at me and they think, oh, well, she's never experienced what I'm experiencing. And as soon as they start to, one, get to know me and know that I'm real and authentic and I'm not just, I mean, a lot of, I've heard the feedback is a lot of people don't actually believe I'm as happy as I am. They're like, <laughs> oh, this is like a front because I'm really just this bubbly like thing who's just I mean I, I truly believe that my parents gave me the name that like I could be given no other name like bliss is truly what I like represent and um yeah and like a lot of girls one when you're struggling with like an insecurity um and you're struggling with happiness and this person who is just a beaming of happiness it's either gonna do one or two things you're gonna be attracted to it or you're gonna like feel retracted from it and be like hey this isn't real like there's no way this is authentic so one, once they start to get to know me and know that I'm authentic and I'm actually like this all the time, they let their guard down. But also when they realize that I have not always been, I've not always had this body. I don't just like wake up and like feel so amazing. You and like, woke up like this. Woke up like this. <laughs> no. And like, so I post those photos so that people can relate to me and understand that like, hey, I get you and I've been there and I want you to be where I'm at. And, um. So yeah, that's like why I love, like I was saying earlier, I love to post the transformation photos now because it's like, hey, I get you. Like, yeah. I relate. So do you, 
What do you do in the morning uh, in sense of getting yourself pumped up? Because it's one thing to pump up everybody else, yeah. but I'm sure you wake up shitty every single, like not every single day, but like on certain days, you're just like, I'm not feeling this. Totally. Or you wake up on the wrong side like everybody does. What do you do to get yourself going? I mean, I've heard one of my homies, Taylor Ponte, <clears throat> he told me he's uh, the youngest executive chef in Hawaii. Wow. Oh. Ever. And he was on the podcast and he was telling me that when he gets up in the morning, he listens to motivational speeches mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Just he and he's going to cook. What a good habit. He just he gets pumped just listening to p motivational speakers, whether or not you're following them like cultish like or whatever. But just <laughs> he, he picks us. He picks a fucking uh, a motivational thing and he hears it. And that's how he's going to start his day. Yeah. G or, you know, some people listen to music. Sometimes I legit more often than not, I want to say like five days out of the week. I'll wake, I'll wake up and a song pops into my head. The first thing that pops in my head. So I just put that song on immediately because mm. that to me is like, this is how your day is going to start today. Yeah. This is the vibe. Yeah. Like the other day I woke up and it was like, I found my smile again by D'Angelo. It's a great song. And then there's another song by Coolio. It's called the winner. It's from the space jam soundtrack. <laughs> still yes. not, it still goes, still goes. <laughs> and you know, just stuff like that. But for you, what do you do? Well, my biggest thing is, um, I see the floor, the gym floor as a stage. And so, I mean, there has been, in the last couple of years, there's been some times where I've really been having some like hard days, some hard times. And um, like in the back of the gym, bawling my eyes out, class is about to start. And so what? I, yeah, there's just been some stuff that like, like I'll even just say it, like my car got repossessed, um, you know. But recently? This was a few years ago. Oh, I was about to be like, damn. This is when I was still coaching classes, though. Okay. Um, car got repossessed. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. Um, you know, I was got, I was just, like, dealing with some huge relationship issues. I was dealing with my parents saying, like, hey, like, we're really not going to, like, support you or claim you right now. Like, we just can't deal with you. Um, you know, just like Were you a, wilding out? You know, I was, I was dealing with, um, I was in a marriage. And so when that marriage was ending and separating it was my family really took um they just didn't they were just disappointed in like me and so they just felt like they needed to step away and was like hey like you need to figure this out on your own yeah and so they yeah. just um they had to back away and um i now have a relationship with both my parents but for a while i didn't okay and at that same time my car was getting repossessed i was trying to find a place to live i mean it was like a gnarly time and i was just dealing with a lot of like really low moments that nobody knew about i mean besides like obviously like my closest friends who i could confide in mm -hmm. but um what i would the like analogy i would like tell myself was like the floor is a stage and like my job is to go out there and perform basically and so and that's still how i see it like if there's just days where i'm not feeling it i just see as soon as I walk out on that gym floor and the class is waiting for me, like anything that's happening or anything that I'm struggling with, like it all closes and like I'm putting on not like a show, but kind of because yeah. they're not going to know that I'm dealing with anything. They're all, all they're going to know is their trainer is hyped. Their trainer's ready to go. And like, I am stoked to be there. Well, you're checking the baggage at the door. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. that's like the biggest thing I do. It's just no, you're like, a professional. Yeah, that's absolutely. what it is. You know, mm -hmm. you check your baggage at the door. Those problems are still going to be there. Yeah. Whether or not you you do this class good or not. So you might as well just make it the best and do the one thing that's going to help you get out of the situation. Totally. Right? Totally. So, I mean, wait, you said you're 27. Yeah. You were already married. Are you still married? Yeah. So I actually got married at 19. Whoa. Yeah. And like it kind of started to, um, it was in 2000, end of 2016 is when everything started to like really like fray and go out. And I was, um, I was doing group fitness. Um, I wasn't at hardcore yet. And, um, so that was, you were already in Cali by this point. I was living in Cali. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I was training at another gym for the one I was at right before hardcore fitness. And so, and yeah, and like, um, even when I was at hardcore, I was trying to find a place to live and my roommate bailed like at the last minute who I had planned on move in with. And I was at the gym. I went in the storage closet. I cried my eyes out and then I wiped away my tears. I went back out and I was just like, you didn't get puffy. I mean, like people either think that I was high or, oh, that, oh my God. or they could tell that I had like been crying. Yeah, you've been crying. Yeah, because my eyes were a little red, but yeah. 
but at that point, like, I just know, like, I'm just going to be hyped. I'm going to be moving around, and I don't want anyone to, like, know. So, like, only the people who really know me and have been with me for a long time could probably be like, oh, the bliss is off. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, I just, like, see it as, like, okay, like, and honestly, I'm always so grateful. Like, when I'm going through something that's really, like, crappy or I'm having a really bad day, I never want to go to work. But it's always the best thing for me because I get yeah. there, and I'm just around people, and I'm just, like, I forget about the things I'm going through, and I'm also around people who are, like, I'm trying to uplift and it just uplifts me to like motivate and inspire. So, well, I mean, I, and this sounds super lame, but it's so true. I, I, uh, I, I have an, a confession. I would watch a lot of romantic comedies, especially when yes. I was growing up. I was raised by my mom, essentially. Like I didn't see my dad a lot. I'm not like, oh, I only, you know, my dad wasn't around. Like, no, my dad was around, but I, I lived with my mom a majority of the time. Yeah. So when I'm with my mom, you watch romantic comedy. So I always, I watch both legally blondes in the yes. movie theater with my mom. Yes. And there's this one quote as lame as it sounds, but she's like, happy people, you know, they give you, give you endorphins, endorphin, <laughs> like happy people don't like murder people, you know, like yes. that one scene. Yes. <laughs> and as I think about it all the time, honestly, I, I think about that stupid ass Reese, Reese Witherspoon quote and it, but it is true. Yeah. Every time after you, you know, either work out or I go to the coffee shop and end up talking to people, I can actually like get through my day totally. and whatever bullshit's happening after work, I'll deal with it then. Right. But for the moment, I'm here doing honestly what I like to do. And why am I going to let other stuff affect the one thing I actually really like to do in this other nonsense that's like trying to intrude on my my vibe, yeah. on my daily life? You know what I mean? So totally. that's kind of, ah, man, that's. I hear that a lot too, because I I was talking recently, even working in coffee. It's like, or uh, at the at the shop down in downtown. Yeah. I tell the owner, I'm like, dude, well, as soon as I walk through this door, everything else in my life just stops. Like, mm -hmm. it's so funny. I even talking to Leslie the other day. Every time I talk to her since she's been gone, she's like, hey babe, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm at the shop. <laughs> you know, because like we're a three hour difference right now. So right. it's. She's like, you're always at the shop. I'm like, yeah, always at the <laughs> fucking shop. <laughs> Not in a bad way, but it's just like. But, you know, you check everything else and it gets to a point I've, I've even realized in myself, uh, again, realizing how important uh, fitness is for, for me personally, is that because I, I have such a mechanism where I can shut it off, mm -hmm. I don't think I fully am like getting that, uh, for lack of a better term, like that baggage off of me. Totally. You know, it just like sits there yeah. and like manifests and yeah. just gets like, ugh, you yeah. know, just like that nastiness. Mm -hmm. But the other thing... Along with that, I realized too, I've had to, uh, I went to the doctor recently and they were like, yeah, you were doing this, you're doing that. And you're like, sounds like you were living pretty unhealthy for like two weeks, but it wasn't like I was eating shitty and drinking all these other things. It was drinking, it was smoking, it was working out way too much mm. and then working constantly and none so of it like sleeping. No recovery. No recovery, full throttle, uh, fully automatic. Rockstar for lifestyle two, right Yeah, there. for two weeks just going before we went to Europe doctor's like yeah you were probably really stressed but the thing is is uh you realize that it's unhealthy but bringing nutrition into this and that's one thing i wanted to touch on with yeah. you is you know especially having your eating things like yeah. we're too skinny and then you gain weight what do you do who's taught you for your nutrition now like to get a balanced diet to maintain what you've already attained mm -hmm. um yeah um, as far as like who's taught me, it was really a long learning curve. I wish that I would have gotten a coach myself because it would have been a lot quicker. But for me to stop binging, I basically stopped dieting. And as soon as I stopped dieting, the binge like craving went away. Um, cause I basically stopped dieting cause I just felt like hopeless. I'm like, why am I even dieting? I've gained 60 pounds. I'm just going to enjoy my life cause I'm gaining weight anyway. And so as soon as I basically stopped that, that was when I was like, oh, okay, like I'm not binging anymore. And I actually lost weight when I stopped like quote unquote dieting. Um, and so I really just started to like figure things out. I did a lot of like research and like watched videos on YouTube and um, was really just this like long learning curve of like what is balance? What does it look like to like eat things that I love but like still make progress and it definitely took me a long time. I, w I sat in like the 150s up until like 2017, early 2018. And now I'm like the low 130s. And I'm at a 
definitely a physique where I'm very happy with and I'm just wanting to maintain this and I still have like two cheat meals every single week. Um, I eat chocolate every single day. Um, so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Dove chocolate. Way to go. Boom. Um, yeah. And like, obviously I'm enjoying this wine, but there's no restriction. And like, I have a photo shoot. I have two photo shoots this week. Um, are you modeling now? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I have a photo shoot with, um, one of my girlfriends who's a photographer who I do this every couple months with her just for like photos for my Instagram. And then another one of my girlfriends. <laughs> just photos for your Instagram. Literally, it's yeah. Like, well, that's promotion, just, right? Yeah. That's like the, you're a professional. Yeah. So. Um, do you want to kill that? Gosh. All right. All right. Support. Top her <laughs> off. Sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to cut you off. But is that, <laughs> let me we, know. we killed this bottle of wine. It's, it's pretty easy to do. I know. It's so smooth. Boom. Um. Gosh, where was I? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> Uh, we we're talking about nutrition, yeah. your cheat meals, yes. your chocolate every single day. So it's really just figuring out what. Oh no, work you're a model. You. You're a model yeah. now. I'm that's a model I'm now. Yeah, yeah. Model yeah. Now. yeah. Uh, yeah. You do it for your Instagram. <laughs> you're promoting, and that's. Mm-hmm. But you're also you're creating your own brand, right? Yes. You're, uh, I forgot who well, I was listening to the other day, and there was like the it was this guy Naval. He was like this motivational person. He was saying mm-hmm. like the 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 way of the future is gonna be. The, the way to be affluent is people are going to be investing more in themselves. And they, yeah, they, absolutely. This, his argument was like, if AI is going to take over at all these jobs, it's going to give people more time to be creative and do their own things. And so these entrepreneurial uh, personal brands are going to be start taking off because people are, gonna, are not going to be able to do the other things that they were able to do before. Totally. But I mean, yeah, like invest like I've spent over nine grand this year on coaching programs on my videographer on um uh a coaching programs meaning like yeah so i'm actually in um do you know who amanda bucci is by chance amanda bucci she's a huge instagram business guru basically okay and she basically teaches people how to be fitness coaches online so i definitely dropped a pretty penny on her 12-week coaching program which has taught me all about like marketing and like how to create an online program and like how to successfully run it basically and, um, cause eventually I'm not going to want to be in a gym at all times of the day. Um, yeah. I'm going to want to have an income that's done like through at home where I can like live and like have my life. Um, so that's why I started doing that. And then I also got a financial advisor, which is nice. another program that I'm doing. And, um, you know, I have a videographer and I have a photographer to help my Instagram grow and all that stuff. So like to be aesthetically pleasing. So, yeah, yeah. you know, to be an entrepreneur is like so much invest in yourself i've spent so much money on um personal development courses i've done so many of those and which is like when you when you ask me like what are the things that you do to like help you like in your day it's like so much of my personal development that i've done has really just like on a daily basis has helped me so i could not like preach enough to like get people to do that but i was literally dragged to my first one i tried to get out of it like as I like lied my way. I was like, I can't make it. I have to work. Blah blah blah. And like, like seminars or something like that. Yeah, conventions. I it, yeah, it was like a, it was a seminar. It was a three day seminar. Okay. And I told I'm a I'm a person who commits to everything, bails on everything kind of deal, you know. <laughs> and so I committed. Thank you to for my not friend. bailing on this. <laughs> I know. I actually stayed loyal. Um, but yeah, one of my girlfriends asked me to go, and I said no. I'm not gonna. Or said yeah, for sure I'll go. It was like three months away. And then, like, a month later, she's like, hey, I got your ticket, blah, blah, blah. She actually told me she paid for it, which she got it for free. But when I tried to bail, I was like, oh, dude, I got to work, blah, 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 which I was totally lying. She was like, oh, I paid $300 for your ticket. You're going to have to find a way to go. So I was like, crap, I actually have to go to this. Yep. So I went, and then immediately I was hooked. And I ended up doing the, the following courses after that and after that and after that. And it was like a year and a half of personal development and, like, Wow. Yeah. I'm, interesting it changed me in like the best way in ways of like giving you more confidence is it like business aspects what i in mean what ways? it's really just in like how you see yourself and i see the world like you never i never knew like a lot of the breakdown was like you tick this way because of this and so there were so many limiting beliefs and so many thoughts i had about myself that i didn't even know and like one of the examples was like the guy was talking about how like everyone has an event in their life when they're from when they're like two years old to seven years old that a belief that they create about themselves and he was talking about a lot of tragedies that happen to kids or whatever and that creates this belief that like 
not traumatizes them, but like changes the way they see the world and themselves for the rest of their lives. He said, everyone has this experience. And I like raised my hand and I was like, honestly, I had a really happy childhood and there's nothing that ever happened that was bad. Cause like some people were like stood up, they got raped or they got molested or like their brother died or whatever it was. Like a lot of people had like these tragedies that shaped who they were. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't think of one. I had a very happy childhood. And he said, it doesn't have to be a tragedy. There's something, there's some thought you have about yourself that happened. You know, I think it was before you're nine years old or whatever. And I don't remember, we had to do this exercise and I re- and I remember as soon as it came to me, I just started crying. And I stood up for the whole class and I said, um, I've believed my whole life that I wasn't smart. And it was because in the fourth grade, I couldn't pass any spelling tests and I had to get like basically special treatment and they basically dumbed down all of the spelling tests for me. Instead of 20 words, I had to do 10 and then instead of a lot of the homeworks, I had a tutor or whatever it was who was helping me do all my homeworks and so that was the event that led into the rest of my life of me telling myself that I'm not smart, which shaped into I'm not gonna be an entrepreneur I'm not smart enough I'm not smart enough to apply for this job I'm not smart enough to be a trainer and all of these things and I realized that like still that's a limiting belief that I really really struggle with like I'm launching this nutrition program that's I'm launching this week and it's something that's so hard for me to do because I have to like guide these people and I tell myself I'm not smart enough to do this. <laughs> and it's what? just For real? and it's just from that stupid event in the fourth grade when I couldn't do what the other kids were doing. Whoa. Yeah. And so that was like something that that was like the biggest thing I took away because I realized that that's just a belief that I have about myself that like follows into everything I do. So I actually have written on um in my apartment that um the the power of the statement I am and like what that means is like a really powerful statement and so I have I am smart and it's just to remind myself that like I'm smart enough to do whatever it is that I want there's nothing that I can't figure out Mm -hmm. and I'm very tenacious and I I always figure everything out and that's just something that I have to like continuously prove to myself because since that happened when it did like as a young child it will follow me the rest of my life I just have to constantly fight it you know what I mean? So. No, I know exactly what you mean. It's interesting that you say I am because when I was, <clears throat> I've talked about this a lot actually recently, but I used to work at the Chopra Center in Carlsbad actually for mm. Deepak Chopra. And I worked at the, at the, the guest, the, the guest services area yeah. at the bookstore. And I would, I had the opportunity to lead meditations. I've been meditating for wow. a really long time for most of my life. Like I got taught when I was like super young to meditate and then it led it into that and I got really pumped about leading meditations and then it ended up becoming a thing where like every Friday from this time to this time I would lead these like group meditations at the at the Chopra Center for like 30 people sometimes 40 people wow. and it was like but they I have my own method of doing it but of course I I went along with like the dialogue or whatever that they taught you yeah. to teach to how they taught you how they wanted their method of m- m- meditation but in that they would have this mantra essentially and they would basically like i am Kano cardenas i am bliss love all right but then you would keep on it like saying that and saying that and saying that and then you slowly start um like removing the self ego yeah. removing the ego so you're like i am Kano, i am bliss and then it just ends up becoming after through uh numerous medit- uh repetition it'd be i am because essentially you're breaking everything down to being I am and really just realizing, at least the way I saw it, was that you are not just bliss love all. You aren't just a cono cardiness. You are a part of something bigger and somehow we are all like interconnected. So when we're all in here and we're going to like really just shut down for 30 minutes, do our breath or whatever, or just yeah. focus on something and that's what you're meditating on. Uh it all comes back to I am because you're, you're shutting everything down and essentially like you would imagine like your third eye, your, you know, uh, the, the thousand petal, um, Lotus Mm -hmm. and just keep opening up and like the shedding the layers and doing these things. So when you say I am, it's like, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it really is. It's, it's almost, um, you find it in many different avenues in life and realizing that it's, it's, it's more about, 
self and not selfish Mm -hmm. being self-aware realizing that we're a part of something bigger realizing that your effect the people around you and the energy that you give off like me myself and this is not to be imposing my my views or my beliefs but like i don't really believe in religion Mm -hmm. but i believe in self-awareness and i believe in self and i believe in the universe and these other things but and and energy being the most important part of all that is because the people that you're around and like regardless of race or religion or these things the first thing you feel off of somebody is their energy. Totally. And I feel like you can totally feel like, you know, when people are like, oh, I don't want to walk on eggshells around this person because they feel this way or whatever. Or, you know, if somebody starts getting stressed, like you can feel it off of them. And I feel like if you're in tune with that, it, that affects you even more. Mm-hmm. So, again, just going back to I am, it's like, I, fuck, when you, when you remove the ego and the self, mm-hmm. you really can be like just one with everything and really just kind of be more receptive I feel like so it's it's your mantras your quotes the things that you're putting out into the universe they really come back yeah and everything that you're saying so if you're saying I'm not smart you're gonna feel not smart you you reflect your own reality you prove yourself right yeah yeah you put yourself in these situations that you could overcome yeah but I mean and not to make this about me but like as you're saying this like I remember being like in third grade it just like when you're like was there a moment I I almost failed third grade Mm. Cause my parents got divorced and I remember like my parents were like, Oh, like he's fine. He's fine. But I ended up getting like all ends for like not, not right. satisfactory or yeah. whatever, which is like essentially F's. Yeah. And then I remember like getting made fun of, but like the poorest kid in the school and like all these things. And I just remember like his kid name was Michael. And I remember he, I like my backpack broke. I got all my fucking things. It was like and all ends. And I remember he laughed at me and I was like, motherfucker, you're laughing at me. Like, I don't know. I, even then when I was in third grade, I thought I was like better than that full. Mm. And I was like, you ain't going to be laughing at me. Like you little poor ass bitch. Like hell dude. Like I was so angry and I was like, what are you in third grade? Like eight or nine. I was so pissed off. And I remember there was like a wall ball wall. You know what wall ball is? Yes, absolutely. There was a wall ball wall. And I had a Jurassic park backpack that like split open. And it broke in my, in my lunchbox was Jurassic Park and that broke and I got this shitty thing and I was pissed off and I was getting my ass whooped like every day at school. Legit. Like I'd get just like beat up in between the, uh, in the porter, like the portables and stuff. Really? And yeah. Like bad. I was getting picked on a lot, getting in fights a lot. And then, um, fucking this kid made fun of me and it was like, that was the breaking point yeah. for me. And I just remember I, I charged him. And I fucking just pushed him so hard into the wall, ball, wall. And he fell back and he hit his head all crazy. And I remember just freaking out like, oh, fuck, I might have just like hurt this kid. And then he stood up and he looked at me and he like took off running. And I was like, yeah, bitch, like what? <laughs> and then like after that, it was like, no, you're going to be better. Like, yeah. I don't care. It is. You, yeah, you're fat. Cool. Whatever. Yeah. People are going to make fun of you. You're poor. Cool. Whatever. I'm still going to smash these fools in sports. because I know I'm, get, I'm good at sports or this, that or this. And it was like that mentality for me is what kind of, to go back to your point of like, what shaped you? I think that point at, from that point on, it was like, you could tell me I'm ugly to my face. Yeah. I might be ugly, but like my confidence is going to be like on a million. Like that's amazing to have that mentality. So young, but dude, it was because I was just getting beat down all the time. And it was, I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm going to be the hottest dude. And you're not even good looking. I'm the hottest (laughs) motherfucker out here. You can't touch me, bro. And I feel like kind of, I didn't even realize this till you're saying this to me because it's like, I'll wear something Gucci just cause I'll wear yeah. Gucci with dicky pants. I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, you see this swag. Like, and I realize it now I'm like, Oh dude, I even think about that. Like third yeah. grade. I was, that's, that was that moment. Yeah. That was the moment. I was like, no it's bitch. It's pivotal. And if you can really think about like what, and that's what I had to do. I had to like dig and we like journaled all day about like our childhood to like figure it out. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Like that is what it was for me. So Super cool. Same thing with money. Like we've all developed a belief about money, Mm -hmm. whether it's like you didn't have money as a child. And so like a lot of people who don't have money either have one or two things. They spend their money because their belief is money goes. There's never enough money. So they prove themselves right. So they spend all their money, which is what actually I struggle with. Or they have the, the greed mentality of like I grew up without money. So every dollar I get, I'm going to like, not spend yeah just hold on to it hold on to it yeah like a hoarder but for money exactly it's really cool it's like i love like psychology and like how the brain works and how these things like 
it's just so fascinating to me. I agree. I definitely, I think, I don't like to consider myself like an entrepreneur, but mm-hmm. I definitely use people to my advantage in the sense where, you know, social media affords you so many different avenues now. Yeah, absolutely. And again, like even bringing it back to like motivational things, what you would do during the day to get you going. I, for me, I, I listen to either David Goggins, which is like this mm. Navy SEAL, yeah. just gnarly, like nobody cares. Or this dude, Cameron Haynes, like nobody cares, work harder kind of thing. Yeah. Or even Por Vida Cafe down in the barrio, they have little pins that look like a like an old school California license plate that's all yeah. black with like the yellow writing. Yeah. And it, they like made like a looking uh, a custom make like a custom looking plate plate and it says work harder. Mm. And it, that's it's on my bag. Like, that's what I have yeah. every day. Work harder. That's the mentality of fortitude, suffer harder. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about like your six week, uh, these six week challenges that yeah. you're putting people through. Yeah. So you come up with these programs. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, this is what you have to do. Does this come with like a meal plan? Does this come with uh, workouts or do they just come to you and you work out like together? Yeah. So, well, fortitude is just workouts. And the whole point is to like, put people through these miserable workouts that really get to them mentally because when you're in the middle of them whether it's before or in the middle you feel like there's no way I can do this and so it really is a big confidence builder and because they all complete it and they're like oh my gosh like whoa I'm like who I never would have thought I could do that and they always say that I never look at when you wrote that on the board I never thought I could do that and so um it's it's really just a way to get in your head. And so while people are, while we're doing the class um, and they're doing stuff that's just like excruciating, I'll always say a couple of things. I always say, get out of your head. Stop telling yourself that you can't do it. Because that's something that I have learned that um, I and everyone does. It's like when we're doing something that really sucks, we're telling ourselves either how much it sucks or how terrible we're doing or how slow we're going or how much this is just like the worst thing we've ever done and so I'm there to be like get out of your head get out of your head stop saying that you can do this to help bring them back and I always tell them before the workout it's like hey like get your mind right tell yourself how strong you're going to be in this workout because it's going to make a difference and I also say the whole point of fortitude is suffer harder so I always say before the workout I back that yeah I'm like tell yourself how mis how miserable can you make yourself during this workout how much can you suffer how dark can you go? And um, that was something I heard someone say one time, and I remember that like changed all workouts for me. Like, how miserable can I make myself during this workout? Because if you think about it like that, <laughs> yeah. Like exa- example, one of the workouts is a hundred burpees for time. Leslie was telling me about that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. like you can go through a hundred burpees and make it like suck, but not suck too much. But if your goal and if your coach is yelling at you, make yourself as miserable as you can. You're going to go faster and you're going to go harder and you're going to make yourself just feel sick to the point where you're doing burpees and you can't even breathe, basically. Do you have to do that in a row <clears throat> or is it <clears throat> excuse me, like 10 sets of 10? No, it's 100 burpees for time. For time. So the timer starts. For as long as it takes. Yeah, exactly. So if, could somebody essentially do 10, maybe rest for a second, do totally. more 10? Does, it doesn't matter. So they can, absolutely. But that's what the great thing about Fortitude is. It's in a group setting and they're – is always someone there's even if there's just one person in the group there's always one who's just going like balls out hard and that person sets the tone for the entire room okay and so um you know there might be someone who's really slow at burpees but what's great and i always tell them as soon as you're done you don't rest you encourage everyone else who's still going and that was what like built i felt like so much like camaraderie and like bonding during fortitude and that was why it was such a successful program is because everything was set to like be a team effort or a partner effort. And so it wasn't about you. It was about the person next to you. And so like you would suffer as much as you possibly could and go as fast as you could so that you could encourage the person next to you. Tight. And so it was just like, it was, it was super sick to watch. And they like all just like rounded up and like that last person who was going, as soon as like everyone huddled around them, it was just like, go, go, go. I mean, they would fly because they just felt the energy of like that's tight everyone cheering them on yeah it was super dope so um i mean with you're talking about personal development and the things that you've been investing in yourself now are you also because i've i've had i have both sides of the fence on this i like i have my brother-in-law who's basically 
does almost every certification that I, I can believe, like know yeah. about. And then I have homies who are just like, just go lift. They have a successful gym, successful training. They have their own video, like a uh, vlog, if you will, um, that they invest in, totally. but they don't have certifications. Yeah. Do you have certifications? Yeah, I do. You do. So I actually have like the lowest of like personal training starts that there is. Okay. I have like the two cheapest ones. And, um, I've really just like spent the last five years, like learning from experience. And so like the trainer that I was when I started back in 2014, is just like 360 from like the trainer that I am now. And it's really just from like trial and error and 180. It out. Yeah. 180. 360. Yeah. That would That's go back fully. to the, wouldn't it go back to who you were though? <laughs> It, right 180 would be like 180 yeah <laughs> i failed math guys it's okay we already went over this <laughs> 180 360 360 is just more intense bro maybe like well, a 540 yeah. 540 like, you went mm-hmm. past who you were and then one more <laughs> like another 180 <laughs> yeah but yeah. so yeah you're like a completely different person totally now. yeah and it's and like even one of the trainers at our gym now he's actually not certified and he's a really good trainer and it's just because he's had so much experience in the gym and so I feel like there's like there's trainers who um like I will I will say like there was this one job I had where I was hiring trainers and this girl had all the certs she had a rockin' bod but she couldn't train worth crap she was terrible not like like, a people person yeah she wasn't a people person and like she couldn't like I would I would do exercises and I would be like okay tell me what I'm doing wrong and she couldn't tell me and so that was she knew how to work out Yes. That's interesting. It was really weird. Like yeah. I would literally like go up on my toes in a squat and she like wouldn't, she'd be like, you're doing a really good job. I was like, this girl's going to hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. And so like <laughs> I even did a chest press and I literally bought the bar. She wasn't getting that I was too low. So I brought it down to my belly button and I was pressing at my belly button. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. And she was like, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Keep it up. And so I racked the bar and I'm like, how could you not correct me? I was pressing from my stomach. Yeah, she was just, using all back yeah, or something like she that. Just, just, she just wasn't there. Like she had these like certs, but like there's just a, there's it's just, like being book smart and then having yes, street smarts. Exactly. Like my yeah. brother is brilliant, and he's just like this insanely brilliant person who's like an engineer. And there's me who is <laughs> barely made it out of high school, but like we have such different smarts. Whereas like, well, yeah. there's li- uh, like life experience, totally. and then there's college experience people who maybe were sheltered or coddled and they didn't really ever get their ass whooped yeah perfect example i I talked to my to the owner of seven seas eric and i i said to him once i was like you know we were talking about something i don't remember specifics but we were talking about something i was like you can always tell when somebody has never been punched in the face (laughs) by the way they talk to somebody like because somebody who's been punched in the face and you remember it (laughs) You realize after that, like, what did I do to get that punch in the face? It was either by the actions that I did or the words that I said. Yeah. And most of the time when people talk to somebody like the way that they did, they either don't give a fuck Mm -hmm. or they'd never been punched in the face. Right. I myself, when I was growing up, I knew exactly what it was like to get punched in the face because I got punched in the face a lot, but I would still talk shit. And I did, you know, we don't have to get into that, but it was like, I, I would... I did a lot of things that would get me punched in the face to this mm-hmm. day, but you learn, you learn. Yeah. Right. So I forgot my train of thought why I was going down that path. But the the point is, is that there's a, a certain specific type of person. Yeah. And yeah. That's I just think, I think that like some trainers, like, yes, it's super important to have certs, but it's also like you need both. Like it's, there's you a You need trainer. that life experience. Yeah, you really do. Like, cause it's really just like, if you go and get all these certs and then you're a green stick when it comes to being a trainer, you're not going to be as good as the guy who's been in the gym for a long time and has been doing this, but has the cert that's 200 bucks, AKA me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's just like, you can only, you can know everything, but until you like really dig in and experience it, it just makes a big difference. So it's good to have both, which is why I'm like conflict of I'm doing this coaching program and learning all these new things and like and that's the thing about personal training is like it's a forever school because fitness is forever evolving and you need to know about all the new nutrition things that are in and like the new workout styles that are going and like it's a forever thing so yeah it should always be recertifying and yeah researching all that stuff well that's I mean when I was talking to Leslie before she got on her fitness path it you know we would talk 
and it wasn't like I was trying to, Leslie doesn't like to be told what to do. Yeah. She hates it, especially if it's coming from me. She's like, you know, Delmar said this. I was like, that's cool, but I know too. Love you, babe. Either way. Uh, but like, she hates it. So sometimes when I like, I feel like when she starts figuring shit out, I'm like, see, like, I'm just glad you figured it out finally, yeah. you know? But it's like, it's a spouse rule though. You really can't. Yeah, I can't what tell to her it's what like to do. But with certain things, you just realize like, fuck, dude. Like, come on. Like, yeah. That's what you're supposed to do, right? And I, because I've been around it for so much longer mm -hmm. just because of my mom. Like, but it's so funny. My mom is like, she's pretty old now, but like, <laughs> I'll, I'll still call her. She's like, well, you should be. I'm like, well, actually, that's not right anymore because now there's new ways to do certain things. <laughs> right, right. But it has evolved like super gnarly. Yeah. A 180. Yeah, <laughs> one eighty. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not a three sixty, but maybe a five forty for sure. Five forty. One thing I wanted to ask you about too. Yeah. Because uh, it was a reoccurring theme for today was that uh, you, when I was talking to you about my guests from earlier today, uh, Farmers Market Hawaii, Raleigh yeah. and Keisha, you, I was like, yeah, they're from Hawaii. Da, da, da. But you said you lived in Hawaii. Yeah. For like four years. Yes. So tell me about this. That was the. Oh, that was so much fun. Um, I love Hawaii and I would live there like probably in a hot minute if I if I could. Um, but yeah, we lived on uh, Oahu. This is um, so when I first got married, he was a Marine. And so we got stationed there in uh, Kaneohe. And so, yeah, we lived in Kailua and it was really great. And um, yeah, it was just like I had an office job at this time and I had no idea like who I was or what I wanted to be. And there's just so much that like I wish I would have like done and seen. But. Yeah, it was just, like, such a good time. I'm very much the, like, chill vibe. And so that's why, like, San Diego and Hawaii just, like... One and the same. Yeah, essentially. absolutely. This is, like, Hawaii of the mainland. Totally. So <clears throat> one thing that I've been... Me and everybody who I know who knows my brother-in-law is... Uh, if he, We always ask him, like, dude, are you going to do, like, a, a competition, like a physique show and mm -hmm. things like that? Mm -hmm. For you... I wanted to ask if you were thinking about doing physique shows, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, especially with somebody who's battled such images, I know that when you do physique shows, you have to, like, cut weight yeah, and essentially, uh, like, starve yourself, dehydrate yourself right. to get that, like, swole cut. I mean, talking to Delmar, uh, he would tell me that before they did their um, Ultimate Bodies competition, the one that party that we went to in Las yeah. Vegas where I met Raleigh, he had a trainer, the owner of the gym, and he's a successful physique winner. Like he totally. won best bod. And I've talked to him about it multiple times. It's so funny talking to Ian about how he he's like, bro, like I couldn't believe it. Like you <laughs> fucking saw, you know, like I'm gonna get some hate for that. I hope his voice sounds <laughs> just yeah, like that. I think that sounds like I some local it. But I see Leslie's like you sound Jamaican. I don't yeah, know. You <laughs> sound like an Italian Jamaican. <laughs> Bruh, I think that sounds like how they sound, but either way, it, it fucking Delmar will be with me and he's all, he's like, yeah, Ian told me I like, we can't drink water, but we go to this physique sh like shoot and mm -hmm. before they shoot, they're working out to like get a pump on yeah. like a Maybe good like pump cotton mouth, like crazy, super cotton mouth. His lips were getting like white from oh. being so dehydrated and they looked like they were not puffy, you know, yeah. they were like getting dried out when he said they were drinking red wine and eating m and yeah. because the sugar you. well that and then the sugar helps you like pump, pump up. up or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i seen the video of him and all his homies and they're just like shredded as fuck i'm yeah. like what the fuck dude yeah and th but he's all yeah it's that but times like 10 or even worse when you do physique shows mm -hmm. so, so somebody who like yourself who had had those problems before yeah do you think you would either do a physique show just because you want to do it as a fitness trainer or do you think it might be something that might hinder you and like make you slip back into yeah. some weird thoughts? So I'm actually um, anti-physique shows. Anti-physique shows. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I know it's teach their own and for some people they can they can do it. And um, But I do know that most of the people – I would say I'm just going to throw out like 80% of the people who do shows end up with some sort of body dysphoria, which is what I struggled with, which is where you look at yourself and you literally don't see what's in the mirror. You have a delusion of like what your body is supposed to look like. And it's because you bring yourself to such a low body fat that's not maintainable and it's 
only for a couple of hours that you actually can look that way due to dehydration and yeah the sugar high and just all of these things and like not having carbs for an entire week that like you create this physique and then anything outside of that you begin to feel overweight you don't look good or whatever it is and you could still look freaking like amazing and like yoked or whatever it is um but I have learned that I cannot put myself on any kind of meal plan, which is unfortunate sometimes because um, like at our at Hardcore, you go on a meal plan to do like the 60-day challenge to like lean out or whatever. And I've tried to do it twice. And I haven't binged in a long time. And um, when I started working at Hardcore last year, last August, um, a, a challenge was starting. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this with my team because we have a team as trainers. And so I was like, I'm going to do it with them and like basically like suffer with them. Yeah. And then. Gives it a little bit more just to let them know they're yeah, not alone. Yeah, like, hey, I got thing. you. Yeah. I'm doing this with you. Yeah. And three days into the diet, um, I I binged. And I hadn't binged in a long time. And it wasn't like really bad binge. I really caught myself as soon as I started to just shovel food in my mouth. And I was like, whoa, like, okay, I'm not going to do this. Um, so I didn't do the, the challenge. And I told my team, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I realized that like I just can't do this right now. And so I decided to do it again um, this last January, actually, just a few months ago. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do the diet, but I'm going to be flexible with it. I'm going to give myself one cheat meal a week, and that will keep me sane or whatever it is. So again, I go on this meal plan. I lasted a little bit longer. Um, I was like two weeks in, and I binged again. And so I've, at that point, I came to the conclusion, you know what? I have have such a healthy – and it wasn't even that I – binged slightly it was that my relationship with exercise and food changed I no longer saw food as fuel and a way to like sustain me it was how many calories are in that how many carbs is in that how many fat is in that and then I would be like I would already have had an intense workout but I was like oh I should probably do more cardio today and I was like whoa like when have I ever thought like this this is not me and so since I have so much like self-awareness I realized like okay I need to step back and I have brought my body to a very um, healthy place to where I can really love food and enjoy food, but look at food as fuel. So I just enjoy eating healthy things. And I have abs and I'm, I have a leanness that I'm proud of and I don't put myself through any misery. And so for me, it's just like I cannot do that to myself. I cannot go on a meal plan because I know that like some – for some reason, mentally, it just messes me up with food and exercise. And I know yeah. some people it doesn't, but for me it does. But I also know, like, I hear, like, especially people in the gym, like, f- fitness shows is kind of like a, um, a, what is it, like a, a hype? Like a, it's like the thing to do. Like, as soon as you start to get fit, like, oh, when are you going to do a show? It's like, I don't know, like, a, I don't know what the word I'm trying to think of is, but it's, like a trend basically or a facade yeah it's just like this thing like oh once you started working out like you should compete and I've really tried to like address to people that like hey like a lot of you have struggled with food and body image for a very long time the last thing you should do is starve yourself get on stage think your body's supposed to look this way and then deal with this whole weight gain so a lot of people deal with that already when it comes to the 60 day challenge because well yeah i mean it's not about a diet i mean to bring it back to like what i was talking about leslie and even diets in general it's not that's why i i look at diets i'm like dude diets are bullshit in my opinion yeah because it's not about oh i can do this diet for this select amount of time no you if you really want to look the way you want to look or feel the way you want to feel it's a lifestyle change yeah you have to legitly keep going Mm -hmm. and then at the same time look at food in a different way realize it's not oh i'm not limiting myself like i can't have this candy bar or i can't have this beer you got to calculate what's healthy right just do i want this do i really need this yeah in and out burger this double cheese with whatever no bro you don't need that shit go eat a fucking salad well done animal style fries though dude i'm about that (laughs) i'm not hating on in and out because i go to in and out i fuck with it out hard (laughs) but you can also have healthier options, even totally. if you want to go in and out. You can get the protein style, which is like a fucking lettuce wrap, mm-hmm. essentially. But you get what I'm saying. Totally. It's it's more so it's a give and a take. Yeah. What are you willing to do? And but that's it's almost like a metaphor for life in general, totally. right? Totally. 
Absolutely. You're going to grind this shit out? Bro, the marathon continues. All fucking RIP Nipsey Hussle all day. (laughs) But like that's the marathon fucking continues. This is, dude, marathons are honestly an analogy for life Mm -hmm. in every sense of the word. You're on mile 19 and you're like, fuck, I still got six miles, Mm -hmm. seven miles. This sucks. A seven mile run is still hard Mm -hmm. by itself. And you're on mile 19. I'm talking about, I got to run to mile 26. Yeah. Shit. And that's life. Yeah. Dude. Okay. For every cause, there's a, you know, for every cause, there's a reaction, right? So it's like, I want to go out and party with my homies tonight, but you know, it's a Tuesday (laughs) <laughs> and I know tomorrow I got to be up at 530. I'm at the club. It's two o'clock. I'm going to get maybe an hour of sleep because if you think about it, you get home, you got to unwind a little bit. Can't just be one of those people you walk in and you pass out. Right. It sacrifices. Yeah. And that's what you're doing in marathons. That's what you're doing in life. It's always sacrifices and it's continuous. You can't sprint because you're going to burn out. Right. You got to fucking elongate totally. that, that, that whole, uh, that whole that whole thing. Yeah. But so. that's not what's sexy and appealing to people. It's like, hey, like, you can look this way if you take it slow and then a year from now, dude, you'll be chilling and you'll be looking great. Where it's like, oh, 30 days shredded AF. Like, no. And they're like, oh, th- I'll take the 30 days. You know what I mean? No. So At the end of that 30, well, that 30 days is such bullshit too because it's like, dude, if you know anything about fitness right. and did the one thing that hasn't changed throughout the years, even my mom was a trainer, it was your body doesn't start to show your progress until six weeks. Right. Six weeks is past 30 days. Y'all <laughs> I'm sorry to say there's no quick fix. Six right. minute abs. <laughs> yeah. No, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. It's, it, it's at least what is that another 14 plus that's so 54 to, uh, not 54 stupid 44 <laughs> days you know like they should be like 44 day workout that's more realistic <laughs> 44 days that's six weeks right you know that's not what catches people's attention hell no so, so six minute abs is what's like gets people going no 44 day abs <laughs> no, <laughs> you want you want to make that two pack go to a four right. pack real easy <laughs> 44 day ads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quoting it right here. Right. Get a pad. Dude. Get a right, hold on. I'm, where's my pen at? Oh, it's right there. I'm 44 day ads. I'm writing it down, y'all. 44 day ads. I can't wait for this release. Dude, that's caffeine and green 44 day <laughs> ad workout by Bliss. <laughs> you heard it here yes. first. <laughs> Don't believe the hype. You heard it here first. Caffeine and green exclusive. But, um, so oh. your anti physique shows. Yes. And what are your future plans that you got for in general for fitness, for yeah. your kind of your fortitude, all these other things? Yeah. Um, well, right now I'm getting ready to launch my first ever nutrition program, which is um, 12 weeks of like coaching people, literally what we just talked about to like be like cut. 12 week. Yeah. So it's like cut the diet. Like this is how you like go into balance and like just maintaining and like slowly chipping away to the body that you want and um it's teaching people about it's teaching people about macros because I feel like that's such a good way to lead into intuitive eating which is what I do now which is like learning what my body needs and um so it's like okay you're at what a lot of people are at unfortunately is like 1200 calories and so it's like okay we have to start there because that's where you've been at we have to build you back up, get your metabolic rate healthy, and then we can really start to chip away once your metabolic rate's healthy at, like, losing body fat. But, again, it's not as appealing because people are like, oh, I'm not going to lose fat immediately? Nah, I'm not about it. And so, um, yeah, that's what I'm launching right now. It's going to be launching this week. And I'm like, it's been um, – I'm really excited about it because it's, it's, it's really my, like, deepest passion is, like, getting people, like – hey, I've been there. Like, I really want you to be where I'm at. I really want you to enjoy life and realize that, like, you don't have to work out for two hours a day. You don't have to live on a diet and you don't have to, like, binge and feel guilty about it. You can just, like, live and, like, like, let me show you. Um, So, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Fortitude 2.0 is going to be launching in August. um, Sometime in August. I don't have a date yet. And um, I'm really excited about that. So, everyone, it's probably going to be bigger than ever. And, uh, you know, my goal for fortitude was to have 20 people sign up. And this was like, again, I was dealing with limiting beliefs. I was like, gosh, if only 20 people would believe in me and like 
do this program, I had 56 signups. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn, double. Like, way more than double. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Almost triple. Dude. And so it was like this like, moment of like such like confidence of like people believe in like what I stand for and like what I'm about. And so that really is what like launched me into, okay, I can do big things here. So mm -hmm. yeah, Fortune 2.0 will be coming in August and the Nutrition Brands Nutrition program, Bliss Mode's 12-week nutritional transformation. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Bliss so. Mode. <laughs> so that's what's launching this week. And yeah, it's just um, those are the two big things that are happening in the next few months. So. I back that. Do yeah. you have any more certifications that you're trying to do? So um, through Amanda Bucci's program, she has what's called FOCA. And it's Fitness Online Certification Association or something like that. And that's really just going to like dig into um, teaching kind of what I'm doing now, but like in a deeper way of like teaching people how to, um, you know, do progressive overloads and how to progress their fitness and how to uh, adjust their macros and all of that stuff um, really so that I can build a big online community, which is what I wanted to do. So because um, eventually someday I'm going to have babies and – um, have a life that's outside of the gym because right mm -hmm. now like gym is life and so oh, I'm there all the time um, but I know that eventually I'm going to want to step down from that at least like significantly and so that's why I'm starting now I'm going to build it create this empire of um, an online bliss mode fitness crew and uh, yeah so Perfect. it's just the very beginning <laughs> it's very nerve wracking but it's fun fucking A yeah dude I back that as long as you keep it going I mean everything that you do too. If you want another outlet to promote, holler at your boy. Yeah. I will definitely fucking promote all of that. <laughs> I mean, um, and then just lastly, dude, we almost did two hours. We're like at an oh hour 43 gosh. right now. I yeah. doesn't even feel like it. Dude, I know. It's been pretty chill. <laughs> the one last thing, I mean, we've already kind of touched on it a lot, but it was body image. The one thing I yeah. want to talk to you. And I mean, that's definitely one thing we've talked about a lot, but it just in closing, I mean, for anybody who might be listening or just kind of questioning, what they want to do, whether woman or, or man, whatever, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Um, you know, what do you, any like inspiring words, mentality advice, like what do you have anything to say to those people who might be questioning? Yeah. Uh, biggest thing is to understand that Instagram is a facade. It's not real. And, um, I've even posted some photos of like, there's like this side by side of me looking amazing and then me just standing normal and being like hey like this is a pose like where you can really tweak the way you look and how small your waist is and how big your butt is and all that stuff just by posing differently mm -hmm. and um i really went and unfollowed a lot of accounts that made me feel insignificant and if i was looking at somebody and it made me feel crappy about myself i just unfollowed them and so it's really finding people who are real and authentic and who aren't aren't putting on this like hey, I have this, like, perfect image. Um, and following people who are like, hey, like, yes, I'm a fitness um, influencer and I'm here to, like, better your life, but this isn't real. Yeah, like, you're not flexing. You're not field. flexing yeah, all day. Exactly. And so <laughs> um, just understanding that and, like, getting out of the comparison, like, hamster wheel of, like, oh, I just – I wish I had uh, this girl's legs and this girl's abs. And it's, like – the last thing I want is to like people think that like I look way better on Instagram than I do in real life. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, that girl's using some filter, yeah. using some filters right yeah. there. Yeah, and I just want to yeah. like keep it real and like, um, you know, I like I have like the bliss mode pose, which is like so popular. It's just like where my butt looks huge, but I also like show people like, hey, like that is a pose that like tweaks my back and like gives me a cramp to like get that cramp picture like it's not real like yeah. my butt doesn't actually look like that it's just a pose and so it's just well, like, it's like uh what back in the day like oh that girl's got myspace angles yes like yeah. the whole like way up above you like yeah only shows like your eyes and like yeah yeah exactly it's the same exact thing yeah and so and with all of like the like photoshop that goes on nowadays which is like i have learned is super popular i didn't think people actually Dude. Photoshop their photos, but it's so popular. There was a girl that I knew at a coffee shop that I worked at that she would post it. And I'm like, bro, she does not look like that yeah. in real life. And yeah. she doctored all of her photos 
all the time. Yes. It was fucking so gnarly. Yeah, that's like so sad. Like it just like makes me like kind of angry at those people like why would you like make these girls think that like this is like well, ma- or maybe they thing. think like oh everybody else is doing it. Yeah. Because like maybe. dude, I see you every single day. Right. Or a couple times a week and it's like you don't look like that. Yeah. What 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 yeah. the fuck that you just realize how fake Instagram is sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't try to get too wrapped up on it, but it's yeah. like I have to do it. It's a necessary evil. But I find myself sometimes like I'll be grabbing my phone. I'm like, why am I even like, fuck it, put this yeah. shit down. Like, Seriously. What, just be here. Also, like how you look with like a pump is extremely different. Like my arms, my butt, everything looks very different fresh out of a workout, which is where most people take their photos, right? Because they like looking all good. Their muscles are all pumped. So they snap a photo. But it's like, yo, I'm not going to look like this in an hour. In an hour, there's going to be like – barely any definition (laughs) like maybe a shoulder cap and that's about it and so um i follow a lot of accounts that are like where girls will just post side by sides of like this is what i looked like an hour ago my workout this is what i look like now and it just like Hmm. gives me that like gratification of like hey like i'm a normal girl we don't all look we're not supposed to look perfect or whatever it is and just like be real and know that like instagram is everyone's highlight reel like this is like, <laughs> the best they've ever looked ever and that's what they're posting you know yeah no i totally get that even bring it back to what you were saying earlier in the conversation about uh brand imaging and like what you're doing you're spending money on yeah. creating things that make it, it's your brand absolutely yeah i did not like if you saw the photos that katie took of me like that she doesn't like edit they're hilarious. Like I have like a double chin. I'm like half blinking. I have like, like when I smile, one of my eyes gets way smaller. And so I have to focus on <laughs> opening both my eyes. Like, whoa. yeah, I know. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> dude, that's what the one thing I've tried to do with the podcast. Like I have the caffeine and green, then I have my personal, but pretty much they're like the same thing yeah, totally. on the caffeine and green one. But I, that's strictly only the podcast. But I try to do it just random as fuck. And that way, when I've showed it to some people, it's like, oh, this is like really, I've heard the comment, like, this is really authentic. And I was like, <laughs> the fuck does that mean? But at the same time, it's like, oh, you know what? That's ideally what I want to go that's for. That's a good compliment. My though, whole really thing. Is. Yeah. That's like my whole thing is I don't want it to be like cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. I want it to be wild as fuck. Yeah. random as shit. And then people are going to be like, oh, there's actually like legit professionals. And then there's some like dudes who are just like, Oh, it just must be his homies. Right. You know, kind of thing. Right. And so I like that image and I'm like, oh, that is my image though. So I just got to stick with that. Yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck it, whatever. Like, right. you know, so many people take that thing so seriously and I get it though. Yeah. At first I didn't get it. I'm like, what the fuck? Why can't you just be real? Kind of thing. Like a, like a hip hop, hip hop mentality. Yeah. All this fool doesn't really spit what he's, what he's living. He's just telling stories kind of thing. But then you realize it's like, if everybody's doing this, how do you separate yourself from the pack and make your brand the most authentic yeah. or authentic to you? Yeah. And people are going to receive that or they're not going to receive it. And that's right. all that matters. Yeah. Uh, I definitely get the temptation though. Like, especially as a trainer, like to like look perfect and look fit and like look like I'm just ripped all the time. Like it's a huge temptation to like fall into the like hamster wheel of like perfection, but you just got to like be real. And I have gotten the most amount of engagement on my real post of like, hey, this is like actually who I am. Hey, this is what I struggle with. Instead of like, here's this beautiful photo of me. And this is living my best life. Hashtag YOLO. Oh, you know no, I mean? no, no. Don't say that. Oh, my. But, you know, it's funny. I was having this conversation earlier with Keisha. It was that it's like we were talking about social media again. And yeah. it's social media. You're creating a persona, an mm-hmm. image. And at what point, like we didn't talk about this, but like for me in my in my mind, it's like at what point does real life start to overshadow online image yeah because again it goes back goes back to being authentic yeah so it's like this image that you portray online are you going to be that person in real life yeah and at at some points it could be to a fault and at some points it could be to your benefit right so it's like oh this person is really like that hood i don't want to fuck with that person because you might punch me (laughs) or it's like oh this girl really is like that way and or it's like 
oh, this person really is that way, but I misjudge them. Yeah. And they're actually really cool, but this is just an Instagram thing. Like, right. I don't know totally. if there's people who can differentiate that now. I think it's a learning curve, you know, I think with everything, especially like even like when I was going through like the gnarly stuff in my life that I mentioned before, like yeah, there was even a spot where like I had an ectopic pregnancy and like all of these things and like there's just like certain stuff you don't post and it's so yeah. hard to like figure out, okay, I want to be authentic and I want people to know that I'm being real, but I also like need to keep some stuff to myself. And of course. Like, I've never mentioned on any social media platform that my, my car got repossessed. That's been like a very like thing that like it's just like I've never shared. Yeah. And so it's just like, you know, like there's just certain points where it's like, you know, like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I've been through. But really when you're going through a lot of stuff, it's like, you have to work through it and then you can talk about it kind of deal. Yeah. You got to come back and be like, you know, this isn't going to be funny right now. Right. But I know this might be funny in like six months. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like selfie like, hey guys, my car got repossessed today. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. Be like, no, it's people just be like, like, dang, what? I can't you, believe that happened to you me. You really ain't living that life? <laughs> Because people who really live in that life ain't getting their car repossessed, you know, like, <laughs> like what the fuck? Dude, yeah. my mom got her car repossessed one time when I was, like, a little kid. Oh, my God. That was, like, the word. That yeah, was, like, the weirdest thing. at my work. At your work? I was work? teaching class. And people were like, hey, your car's getting towed. Just randomly. <laughs> like, it's I not like, in the tow area. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, the whole class went out front as I, like, ran to the tow truck. And the guy was like, hey, I'm sorry. I got to take your car. And I was just, like... It was the humiliation that was, like, the worst part. Because then, like, one of the, like, members was like, oh, hey, guys, I think we should all go inside. And so, because he realized, that, like, what was yeah, happening. Yeah. But at the same point, it's just like, oh, my gosh, that was so humiliating. Would you consider that bottom? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would honestly consider, like, my, um when I had my eptopic pregnancy bottom because I almost died. Your what? My eptopic pregnancy. What does that mean? So, basically, I, I was pregnant, but the um, fetus bust through my uh, fallopian tube and so I was internally bleeding and um had I not gone to the hospital when I did I would have bled out in my sleep because I waited too long to go to the hospital was it just like pain in your stomach like it's a gnarly cramp or yeah something like I that? had a lot of pain my stomach was huge but I was just I'm a very stubborn in denial person I'm like oh everything's fine and so I like had this like basically I drank a bunch of alcohol which I never have like liquor and so I was like, oh, I have my having this like reaction to liquor. So you didn't know you were pregnant? No. Oh, okay. No okay, idea. Okay. So I thought my stomach was swollen from the liquor. And then after like two days, I was in excruciating pain, but I was too stubborn to go to the hospital. And on the third day, I couldn't stand up straight, but I had a job interview that day. And I was like, well, I can't go to the hospital until after two because my job interview is at two. <laughs> so literally in this job interview, like dying. And, um, yeah, I finally, like, uh, the guy asked me if I was okay because I was crying. In your interview? <laughs> I had tears coming out of my eyes. And I was like, I have really bad allergies. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. It was so gnarly. Like, it's just, I can laugh about it now. But, um, yeah, I went to the hospital. And basically, when they finally got me back, they were like, you have so much internal bleeding that if you had not come in, they're like, in six hours, you probably would have bled out and died. And they're like, what we the don't know fuck? what we're going to be able to save. We think we're going to have to clean you out. like we, Clean you out? Yeah. Like, they thought they were going to have to take out all my reproductive organs. Like, it was gnarly. They said Whoa. that my stomach was so full of blood that they don't know what's going to be damaged. So, I'm literally going into surgery not knowing what is going to happen when I wake up. It was – that was my rock bottom. And that was the moment where I realized, like, life is – so fragile and yeah. um yeah it was very uh it was a really sucky time so but it's like something that i'm like so grateful that i went through because yeah you you always feel invincible until something like that happens you know until you like experience this like moment when the doctor told me like because i wasn't going to go into the hospital that night because i didn't want to sit in the er because i had to work the next morning and so my thought process was, well, I don't want to go into the ER. I know I'm going to be in there for forever, and I have to get up at 3 a.m. I was like, I'm going to go into the ER on Friday. And the only reason I went in is because my best friend who I was living with at the time was like, I really need you to go so that I can, like, rest easy. And so I was like, fine, I'll go. And I just knew, had she not said that, 
in my own stubbornness and like invincibility-ness, if that's even a word, um, I would have bled out of my sleep. And just never woke up. Yeah. Fucking heavy. And so like when you hear a doctor say that to you and you realize like I am not invincible and yeah. like life can just end like that. It just like changes it. I mean, it changed my entire mentality and it's something yeah. that I'm so grateful that I went through. I can still have babies. Um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good thing. And so, yeah, it was just a very like Whoa. real, hey, this is life moment. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, when they, there's a YG lyric. I mean, it's in a Nipsey Hustle song, but it was YG. It's like when it's game over, it's really game over. Yeah. Like that's. Dude, Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's my mentality on things. Like I'm not super religious i was raised catholic but i'm not really religious but for me personally i was like dude i just think like when it's over it's over like yeah. this is the one time i got yeah as this person totally energy might survive but the physical that's it yeah so it's like dude it really is game over when it's game over so it's like fuck it's gonna happen mm-hmm. but the mentality that i try to keep is if this is all i got then if Brad Pitt, for lack of a better like person to choose, can do this. Granted, he's gifted in how he looks. <laughs> but if somebody can just make that out of nothing, why can't everybody make something out of nothing? Totally. And it's all about mentality. It's about yeah. the energy you put towards it. And I think you're a personification of that. You've definitely switched your mentality mm-hmm. multiple times. Yeah. But now you're in a on a path that I feel is like the correct one because you're – you're healthy. You're happy. You're living. Uh, you're living your best life in the met in the in your name. Yeah. From what we started the conversation with. Totally. Uh, to love everybody, to bliss, and then what was it what, Olivia was peace. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Dude, fucking a. <laughs> well, then we'll leave it right there. Absolutely. Everybody, I really want you. If you want, and you want to get a hold of Bliss, holler at her to basically get that bliss mode for yeah. sure. And uh, Bliss, tell them where they can find you. So my Instagram is bliss.olivia underscore. Okay. And then um, I'm on Facebook as well. I'm not as active on Facebook. I mainly do that for like my gym peeps. But um, I'm on there as Bliss Olivia Love All. Um, or, um, so yeah, you can find me on there. But yeah, mainly Instagram is like my thing. I also have blissmodefitness.com where you can uh, fill out an application for my nutritional um, 12-week transformation. So and we'll see if you're a good candidate. 44 day. That's 44, 44 day, abs. day abs, baby. <laughs> We're going to get that up on the website very soon. Dude, I fully believe that should be a thing. That's way more realistic. Be like, on day 44, you will have the results you want. Guaranteed. If kind you of. stay to the 44 days. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say six weeks. Say 44 days. <laughs> yes. All right. Then yes. thank you so much, Bliss. I really yes, appreciate you coming you. through. Dude, we almost did two hours. We're Gosh. like four, we're 20 seconds short of two hours. Wow. Yes. But um, yeah, fucking A. Thank Anything you that you so need, much. holler at me. We can promote it, whatever. And uh, yeah. This has been so fun. Thank we're you. We're going to have you come on later oh, for heck sure. Yeah. Heck All yeah. Right. Peace. Peace.